on the box. Come on, Mikey, you got it, man. You got it, you got it, you got it. You got it, you got it. This is a presentation of Fox Sports, celebrating 10 years of excellence. Fox Sports welcomes you to the Atlanta Motor Speedway, the Autobahn of the South. Today at 200 miles an hour, we will see if Matt Kenseth can win three in a row, something that hasn't happened in five years. If rookie Casey Kane will move up one after back-to-back second-place finishes. What about Bobby Labonte? He's won here more than any other active driver. Will Jeff Gordon, who hasn't won since last fall here in Atlanta, get back into victory lane? And can Dale Earnhardt Jr. leave it in Las Vegas and bounce back? from his points tumble. The answers are straight ahead at high speed only on Fox. that Jimmy Johnson says you scare yourself on as we welcome you into our corporate headquarters, the Hollywood Hotel, set up near the start-finish line of the show that goes to where the races are to bring you closer to the action. Hi, for our entire crew, I'm Chris Myers. Thanks for being with us. Welcome to the Home Depot pre-race show on Fox Sports, the place where America gathers every weekend for NASCAR. Ryan Newman on the pole today shares the front row with rookie Brian Vickers, who may have described this track best when he said the driver is on the edge of control, but it's also fun. Speaking of edgy and fun, Daryl Waltrip, Jeff Hammond, nice to have you <laughs> that's with that's us. That's us, Brad, and, I'm uh, telling you. I want to remind the listeners, uh, we have a crawl on the lower part of the screen that gives you the latest information on your favorite driver throughout this show, the race and the day. And by the way, nice job of the truck race, finishing third on yeah, Saturday here nice in Atlanta. My man, David Rudeman, I mean, he's, he's going to be a superstar. He's leading, he's fourth no points. He's leading the rookie standings. Nice job, David. Way to go. And a dramatic finish that we might see today. In fact, four times in the Atlanta race, we've had finishes that were finished on the last lap. And do the drivers have fear when they go around this track at 200 miles an hour? Chris, the thing about this joint is you're, you're down in that, you're down in the corner. You've got a handful of steering wheel. You're tugging on that steering wheel. And you're thinking all the time, Man, I'm doing 170 miles an hour, and that right front tire's over. It's going, <laughs> and it's an old guy. Please, like a dog. please don't let anything happen, because you know if it does, you are going to knock that wall down, and that's going to hurt. What's that noise yeah. again? <laughs> okay, look, gotcha. <laughs> what you got going on right now, Chris, is a situation where you're traveling three miles a minute, folks. As he said, 170 miles through the, 7 mile an hour through the corners. You've got to be mentally focusing up on that wheel, because, again, hitting those marks, getting down the straightaway like you need to, and you're coming up on your competitors so fast. You've really got to be on it. The slogan here, real racing, real fast. And Red Hot Matt Kenseth qualified 30th for today's race. His worst starting position this season. But that doesn't seem to matter as he's proven with his back-to-back -back wins. <laughs> And uh, Matt uh, joining us live uh, down on the track as he's getting ready to get in his car and uh, go racing. Matt, thanks for uh, for being with us. You've already doubled your win total uh, compared to last year in defending your points uh, championship. It seemed like there was a lot more emotion when you got out of the car in Las Vegas. Uh, you know, have you changed your attitude, your emotion a little bit this year? Well, we're all definitely fired up. I mean, with uh, the year we had last year, it was a great year. And uh, I know the guys are really fired up, you know, with, with points change and maybe some of the criticism to uh, try to go out and win races and, and try to win the championship again. So everybody's... Uh, you know, I think more excited this year than, than what I had last year as far as Robbie and myself and, and the whole DeWalt team. So uh, it feels good to have everybody so pumped up. It feels good to start the year so great. And uh, we've never won two straight and started off a year quite that strong. So uh, we were pretty excited last week. Yeah, you, you know, Matt, this is DW. Probably the thing that, that we heard all winter long was the change in the point system. And how does that make, what does that feel like to know that you may have single-handedly be responsible for that? <laughs> 
Well, I'm, I'm really, I take a lot of pride in, in winning the championship last year with my team because uh, so many other great champions have won under that format, you know, yourself included and Dale Earnhardt and Jeff Gordon, just uh, a lot of great champions. And I feel really, really honored to be on a list with all the drivers that great. And, you know, from now on, it's going to be different. Well, it might be the guy who ran the best all year over 36 races, but yet, on the other hand, it might not. A guy could come from 10th and be 800 points behind and still, uh, you know, get into that championship at the end of the year. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm really thankful that we were able to win it last year under the format that's worked so good for so many years. Matt, this is Hammond. You guys were so good in 2003, but I talked to a lot of your team members, uh, crew members, and they said they're even, this team's better than what it was last year. Is that possible? Well, I think they are. We haven't had any turnover in people, and whenever, you know, this is a people sport like any other sport, and whenever you don't have turnover in people, and, and all the people are your buddies and your friends, and you know them by name, and they're all working hard, and, and after the same thing, uh, it makes the guys better. It's the second year for our over-the-wall group being together, and, and we've seen the last two weeks that, that they're better than what they were last year, and just, uh, you know, everybody's pulling on the same end of the rope. Everybody, you know, knows each other's personality pretty well and communicates well together and I think that's uh, real important toward success. All right, thanks Matt for taking a moment uh, getting into your car and uh, good luck today. I will talk to you later on. All right, thanks. Go get him, buddy. Matt right, gave you. his crew that, that pep talk uh, last week. Now he has said th those uh, years of G Gordon winning 13 races in one season are gone, but are we talking to a repeat points champion here? Well, I think it's very possible. The only thing I would say to Matt and his team is I would, I'd like to see him step up that qualifying effort. I know that's bothering them too, but you get back there in the eye of that storm week in and week out, and that's the middle of the pack, sooner or later that's going to bite you. Need Chris, to be up front. He's already a better, off to a better start than Gordon or Earnhardt, who were repeat champions in the past, so I definitely believe he's got a leg up on everybody right now. And Kansas, 88-point uh, lead in the Nextel Cup Championship race, the largest margin at this time in the season since Cale Yorbo in the late 70s. Now, in addition to Kansas, Elliott Sadler surprisingly third, his best uh, point total at this point of the season. And Casey Mears is in the top ten for the first time in his brief Cup career. As for last week's points leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr. went from first to seventh place. Jr. couldn't leave Las Vegas quick enough last Sunday. He finished the race in 35th place. He was in and out of the garage all afternoon without really a clear explanation. It was a testing week for the driver of the eight car. Matt Yoakum is down on the track now with Jr. Matt? Chris, after finishing 35th at Vegas, Jr. and the Bud guys penciled in tests at both Bristol and Kentucky, combining for almost 500 laps of testing in junior what were the big things that you guys learned <laughs> well uh, we just had to get the car driving better because of how bad we run in Vegas and uh, we're going to Texas after today to test for two more days so just keep testing until we get it right and um, just real happy that my team's gonna put forth that kind of effort to make sure we get things dialed in it takes a group eff group effort and uh, we need to all work hard and and you want to go with a test team possibly too like a lot of other teams have now yeah I mean that's where I think this going you're gonna have test drivers and test teams and another whole set of uh, employees just devoted to that type of thing and it definitely cuts a lot of corners that a lot of the teams are already cutting. And, uh, you know, as well as I do, if you don't cut corners, you get behind. And so it's uh, – but it doesn't come out, come come down to me. It comes down to the people with the money in their pockets. So uh, we'll just have to see how it works out. The first test on the agenda. They will leave here and go to Texas. And Daryl, dust off that helmet. Get out the Nike racing shoes. You may have a job still yet here in racing on this side of the fence. <laughs> All right, thanks, Junior. Uh, DW, what do you make of uh, Junior emphasizing testing? Well, the first thing is they're going to call his car that he had in Vegas, Shanita. <laughs> Why you need a lot of work. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing is, is he he keeps saying this, and I picked it up last week. I picked it up again today. We need to spend more money. Right. It comes down to money. Getting that test team out there and getting getting uh, getting something going. Well, I mean, he dropped out of the so fast last week, uh, faster than Howard Dean. But how does a championship team miss that big? Well, it's real simple. Right now, they underestimated the new tires, and what they had to do. Talk to Tony Uri Senior. He said, guys, could not believe how big a change these tires were at Las Vegas. So they had to go back to the drawing board. And he really believes they're on top of it right now. They're working very hard, and they're not going to quit work until they fix it. So that's how you win championships. Speaking of championship teams, uh, Bobby Labonte only a six pack of victories here, starting. 10th today, and so what a perfect time for our Get to Know You Choice game, 10 laps with. Uh, Letterman or Leno? Letterman. Okay. Uh, chocolate or vanilla? Vanilla. All right. Uh, Beatles or the Stones? Beatles. 
Uh, boxers or briefs? Well, briefs, I guess. <laughs> uh, all right, short track or super speedway? I think I short track. Yeah, we can guess. Uh, East Coast or West Coast? East Coast. Republican or Democrat? Republican. Blonde or brunette? Uh, brunette. Fishing or hunting? Fishing. And an earring or a tattoo? Neither. Okay. <laughs> okay. Paper or plastic? Just want to see if you're paying attention. Uh, plastic. Plastic. All right. <laughs> Meanwhile, Casey Kane uh, has been uh, coming in second uh, lately, the last uh, two races, and actually on the racetrack, not the only place that uh, the youngster's been coming in second. Well, you get that you get that victory late. Everybody's all over you, right? Uh, he's a guy oh, who will. He said, "I never expected this this soon," but he's tired of finishing second. Oh yeah, he'll get right now. It's cool, as they like to say. He'll 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 he won't be too too dissatisfied with that. But sooner or later, he's yeah. going to start wanting to win. I see a lot of chemistry between he and Ray. Looks like Jeff Gordon and Ray a few years ago. All right, let's go trackside for the uh, opening ceremonies as we get ready to go racing here in Hotlanta. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats as the Robbins Air Force Base Honor Guard and Lovejoy High School Air Force Junior ROTC present today's colors, followed by Frank Upchurch, President and CEO of Georgia Baptist Healthcare Foundation, as he delivers today's invocation. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunities we have. We ask today that you will bless our country, bless our friends in Spain, and be with them in this time. Be with our military and those who protect us in foreign souls. We thank you for this facility, for those who make it a place to be, and we ask now your safety upon the drivers and their crews and their families, giving us strength in all we do. Amen. Please remain standing as the U.S. Army 82nd Airborne Division All-American Chorus from Fort Bragg, North Carolina, performs today's national anthem. fans cheering on the drivers and their crews race four of 36 this the next L cup chase for the championship we'll be back to get things going the home depot pre-race show continues mike joy in the booth take it after this Welcome back to the Home Depot pre-race show brought to you by the Home Depot, NASCAR's home improvement warehouse. Atlanta Motor Speedway's grandstand filling in as we close in. On the start of today's race, let's go down to the starting grid. Janie Zalasko. Well, five. 
500 miles makes this more like an Ironman. And nine engines, nine failed the endurance test last March. One of those belonged to the 48 team of Jimmy Johnson. They had one of the fastest cars, but they weren't around for the checkered flag. You better believe it was top of mind this weekend. It's one of the reasons they ran the fewest laps during happy hour. This team is determined to get back to the top 10. Mike? Thanks, Jeannie. Hi, everybody. And again, welcome to Atlanta. Mike Joy with Larry McReynolds. You'll see our starting lineup for today's race across the bottom of the screen as we continue to bring you information and insight. Four of the less 10 green flag finishes at this racetrack have been closer than one second, and three of those, Larry, were side by side. Last week, we had comers and goers in the field. Today, it looks like a game of hits or misses. Well, that's it, and I mean, this racetrack is different from what it was in yesterday's practice, and again, we keep talking about this, the shorter rear spoiler, the different tire configuration, it's like the band of a good handling car has narrowed up. These guys will have to make adjustments to these race cars all day long because this racetrack is going to constantly change. But I think the big question, can Matt Kenseth do it again? Can he come from 30th? The biggest obstacle will be the man up in 10th who has a third of his career wins here, Bobby Labonte. And you know, if Casey Kane is tired of finishing second, he needs to meet Harry Gant. <laughs> yes, he does. Yeah, two's not very many second no. place finishes in a row. Harry was Mr. Second Place until he went on a tear and uh, won several in a row. They've been racing here since 1960, 89 cup races, 37 different winners, but a lot of very close finishes. Once again, let's go trackside. Now, let's welcome a true golf legend, Arnold Palmer, as he delivers the most famous words in motorsports. Gentlemen, start your engines. to go for 500 miles the first 500 mile race of 2004 with the unrestricted engine package and so with that at stake where today is DW's hotspot You know, folks, every week we're going to find the trouble spot, the hot spot on the racetrack, DW's hot spot. And today it's over here in turn two, the crack in the track. You know, folks, you're going to hear us talk about how fast this joint is. That's all we talk about here. And it is 170 miles an hour through these turns. That's straightaway speed at a lot of tracks. But you got two options here. You can put that left wheel down on that white line like a Tony Stewart and ride off this corner nice and low. Or you can get up high next to the wall like a Michael Waltrip and run off the corner up high and get a good straight shot down this little straightaway. What you don't want to do and what you got to be careful of is this crack in the track. There's sealer here. You're coming off the corner. You've got a handful of steering wheel. You're running 170 mile an hour. You hit this crack. You hit this sealer. Your car washes out. It wants to slide up the hill. You got somebody coming by you on the outside. You make contact. When you make contact, what happens? Big boom. Big booms and big finishes. And what always happens over there, a one car problem becomes normally a three, four, five, or multi car problem. That's CW's Hotspot. Singular Wireless and Fox Sports team up to bring NASCAR fans a chance to win a VIP trip for two to the 400 at Daytona this July. The winner becomes the virtual crew chief of Team Singular, meets Robbie Gordon and Richard Childress, and takes the Richard Petty driving experience. Stay tuned for the Singular virtual crew chief questions in today's race. Answer the questions on your Singular's wireless phones or go to foxsports.com. Like sand through an hourglass, and a wedge being adjusted ever so slightly, so are the races of our season. Previously seen on As the Wheel Turns. did we expect to see the very same one-two finish in consecutive episodes. Casey Kane comes home second again. Young and reckless Ryan Newman will have the pole in Atlanta three straight years. Oh, my. And with rookie Ryan Vickers, are we set for another sensational rookie finish? 
We made you wait. We made you wonder. Until now. The television novel that tells the story of As the Wheel Turns. Just can't wait for next week, can you? <laughs> Welcome to NASCAR on Fox. Today's telecast of the Golden Corral 500 presented by Gillette Mach 3 Turbo. Budweiser, official beer of NASCAR, and proud sponsor of the Bud Pole Award. Ryan Newman's picture emblazoned right up there. It's his 20th career pole, the second fastest driver in history in his career to reach that mark. And he, of course, goes to the Bud Shootout. And since 1979, Anheuser-Busch has awarded more than $8 million as title sponsor of NASCAR's Pole Award program. There, Newman leads the grid as it crawls across the bottom of the screen. The cars crawl across the start-finish line at pace lap speed, and we go to Steve Burns. Hey, Mike, we heard DW say that Tony Stewart can drive that number 20 car at the bottom of the racetrack. Now, we typically hear drivers talk about the entrance to a turn, the middle, and the backside. But Tony Stewart takes that a step further. He talks about the turns in increments at the apex, and that's why he is so good here at Atlanta. Dick Bergeron. On Friday, Bakersfield, California's Casey Mears celebrated his 26th birthday right here at the racetrack. But he's got so much more to celebrate than just that birthday. Last weekend in Las Vegas, he scored his career best ever Nextel Cup finish. And in every practice session here, he has been in the top five. I talked to him this morning. He's very confident of another career best finish. What do you think, guys? You going to do it? Yeah. All right. Matt Yoakum. Dan, all eyes have been on young Casey Kane. The last two races, two second place finishes. Maybe today will be the day he rolls off in the 12th position. His crew chief, Tom Baldwin Jr., told me a small air pressure adjustment from the end of final practice to this morning. The car near perfect. Owner Ray Abraham is trying to take away a lot of the attention and keep Casey's focus on the race car. It's worked well so far, guys. A lot of focus on those young Casey's, but Daryl, the race is here. Have traditionally gone to veteran drivers. This track is so fast. It's a, it's a kind of catch your heartbeat kind of race. Yeah, you can wear yourself out. You can wear your equipment out here. It's 500 miles. It's very physical. You've got to save a little something for the end. That's why we have these exciting finishes year in and year out. Larry, we talked about hits and misses. If you miss the setup, can you get there? Yeah, I mean, this race is known for long green runs, and that's the big problem. A lot of times you don't get a lot of opportunities to adjust on that car, so the hopes are you're close when it starts, and you can tune on it as you get those cautions and are able to make those pit stops. Some of these pit crews participating in the McDonald's drive through Championship. The crew with the fastest pit time cumulatively for the day wins $20,000, as Jimmy Fennick did last week. And the crew with the fastest cumulative season-long pit time gets 200 grand. And we're on one to go on a kind of cloudy day. It's been sunny here all weekend. It's been kind of nice as we get set to go for 500 miles. This will be one we watch all day long, this pit window right here. And that number keeps shrinking, Daryl. Yeah, they keep tightening the fuel cell roofs, the capacity of the fuel cells. But the biggest thing is the gears these guys are pulling. I mean, they're turning these motors 9,600 RPMs. That's the reason the guy that's most nervous down there is the engine tuner. Yeah, the, more, the harder they work the engine, the more RPM they turn, the harder they work that engine, the more fuel it's going to consume. That lap, red flag lap indicates if a caution comes out after lap 321, a red flag would not be used. You see, it's a bit overcast. There's a big storm system coming in from the west. We don't think it'll get here before this race ends. Yeah, and let's look at the track temperature right here, 96 degrees. But I think the biggest thing is very overcast today. And I think that was a big relief to some of these guys this morning in the garage here because a lot of these cars were very loose yesterday. The cooler track conditions, overcast conditions, will tighten these cars up just a little bit, make them grip the racetrack better. We were on one to go, but car number 80 is stalled down on the apron in turn number Number one, that's Andy Hillenberg. And they'll have to get Andy going before we can start. You know, we talk about the track conditions, the overcast conditions. That The other big choice was the gears because the cooler temperatures, the speeds go up, the RPMs go up. So there was a huge choice of gear selection in the garage this morning. Should we pull the lower gear that we had yesterday or go with a little higher gear because the track's going to be quicker? 
Now, the basic engines in these cars, let's take the Chevys, for instance, dates to 1955. It was 265 cubic inches, put out about 140, 150 horsepower, and they turned it all the way up to 4,000 RPM. That is still the basic block design and configuration that's in these cars. What are they going to turn them today? They're going to be turning about 92, 94. I've even heard 9,600 RPMs. It's just they have much more durable parts, rocker arms, valves, valve springs. All the parts are much more durable than they were even five years ago. Yeah, it's, same, it's the same basic parts, Mike, Larry, but the quality of the materials in the connecting rod, in the piston, and particularly in the valve spring area where they have imported steel from I don't know, Europe or somewhere to make these valve springs out of one crew chief told me, he said, the valve springs on our engine are bigger than the springs we run in the front of the car. Wow. Daryl, can you remember a time in your career when you radioed in and said, I've got plenty of power. I've got enough. I've got plenty of power. No, I can't. No. <laughs> There's the point. <laughs> More power, Scotty. <laughs> now, we talked about close finishes. You should have been here yesterday in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. As they came off turn number four, that's Bobby Hamilton outside. Mike Skinner inside for the win. Hamilton gets it. They had bumped earlier, and Mike Skinner made the save of the day. Hamilton, the winner. Skinner, second. David Rudiman from the pole, a fine third-place finish. Travis Quaffle, Matt Crafton. Wow, what a race. And I think you just look at the names there in the top five in the Craft Rock Series. I think that just goes to show you where that series is at. I mean, that's guys that have been competitive and won races in the Nextel Cup Series. Andy Hillenberg's car would not fire, so they're going to haul it back to the garage. He will still get credited with a 43rd place finish, should he not be able to refire that car. Here's our Quaker State aerial coverage, and you see the front grandstand is nicely filled, and you see what makes this a quad oval, that double dog leg in the front straightaway like Charlotte and other tracks. This used to be the back stretch. The track used to run around like this, like a traditional oval, and the grandstands that are now on the back stretch and the suites above them, that's where the original start finish line was in VIP suites. And when Bruton Smith bought this track, he said, that's nice, but it's not enough. We want to reconfigure the track. So instead of tearing that down and rebuilding upon what's there, there's our old TV booth right up on top. They said, let's leave it there and change the whole racetrack and make the back stretch, the front stretch, build condos, build suites. Wow. Yeah, and, and here's the how much room you have to rest. I, well, <laughs> I was going to show you. That back straightaway is 1,800 feet long. That's all you've got to get your breath because the rest of the time, the turns are trying to suck it right out of you. Yeah, I mean, it takes 30, 31 seconds to get around this racetrack. And race trim, you're turning about 22 or 23 seconds of that time. Now, good news for race fans. A lot of folks have been to this track and in the past said, I'm never coming back because of the traffic. There's a brand-new multi-lane highway being built from I-75 right to the back door of the speedway and they hope to have it completed for this October's race, and that should take care of all the prior traffic problems here. And the governor Thursday said they're going to name that Bruton Smith Parkway. I think neat. that's appropriate. There's 125 plus, 125,000 plus seats here, so a lot of seats, a lot of people, including Arnold Palmer. Looks pretty good in brown. <laughs> yes, he does. Make his 50th start in the Masters here in a couple of weeks. Well, DW coming off turn four, 200 miles an hour racing. Reach a pair and pull in belts tight one more time. They are definitely going to get on with the program today. Here they come down. Green flag out. Boogity, 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 boys. Let's go racing. Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car at first. He didn't get a very good start, but he picked up on the board in the turn one. Jeff Gordon in the 24 car working the high side. That's the great thing about it. We already have two or three grooves of racing at this racetrack. Yeah, with the truck race yesterday, they run that upper groove in, and uh, it looks like it's in good shape. You can see the track is pretty dark, so it means it's got a lot of rubber on it. Look at Casey Mears Casey up Mears. there, three wide as they come off turn four. I mean, he's going to get about three or four positions in that half a lap right there. I mean, he is on the move on the outside. The reason I like the outside, if you can stick there, Everybody fights for the bottom. Everybody wants to get down on that inside to protect it. And you can go around a bunch of cars on the outside if your car will hang there. Yesterday's truck winner, Bobby Hamilton, said in victory lane, when asked, why'd you run the outside? He says, because nobody else was there. <laughs> go where they <laughs> are not. Path. Right. 
the Rocket Man, Ryan Newman, quickly rocketed away from the field. He leads outside pole sitter Brian Vickers, Vickers Hendrick Motorsports teammates Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson, and Dale Jarrett and Casey Mears. And let's do not forget, that 25 car is phenomenal at this racetrack. With every driver that's been in it, they've had a chance to win here, and some have. It's and like it don't matter today. what crew chief, what driver's in it, it just runs good. More three wide as Scott Riggs is sandwiched by the Gibbs cars, Tony Stewart and teammate Bobby Labonte in the green 18. And you might say, why are they racing this hard so early? This place is so fast. Ryan Newman will get a half a lap ahead of you before you can realize it if you're hung up in traffic back here. You can't let anybody hold you up right now. I think this goes to show just how good that 20 car Tony Stewart's going to be. Remember, he started 19th. He's battling his teammate that started 10th as they go to the inside of Kevin Harvick in the 29 car. Already in two and a half laps, he's almost into the top 10. And look where those left tires are. I mean, below the white line second place. Now, here are teammates who are not battling. I spoke too soon. Darrell, Jeff Gordon in the 24, he got his teammate, Brian Vickers, in the 25 loose. Yeah. Remember the shorter rear spoiler? Yeah. He had it up there just close enough to take that rear downforce off that car. 25 was a little twitchy off the corner that time. Robbie Loomis, I've talked to him this morning. Of course, that's uh, Jeff Gordon's crew chief. He said he's never seen Jeff go to the high side so early as he did in practice yesterday. That's not typical Jeff Gordon. you got to try it. you got to know what the car needs to be able to run up there because you're going to end up there sooner or later in, in some point in time in the race. You might get it adjusted and get back to the inside, but sometimes in the race you got to go high. You want a dark horse favorite for today? That unsponsored number 23 of Dave Blaney, who's right in this mix with the 97 of Kurt Busch, 29 Kevin Harvick, and his teammate, 31 Robbie Gordon. Blaney nearly won a race here, and he was fastest in yesterday's practice. They're going to run at least four more races in this car with Bill Davis in hopes of attracting a full-season sponsor. And he was having a great run at Daytona. Remember in the uh, Bud shootout, he and... Uh, Jeremy Mayfield got together for the lead. So uh, he's been doing a good job in that car for uh, Bill Davis in that crowd. Watching Jamie McMurray there in the 42 car right behind this group, behind the Robbie Gordon in the 31. A lot of weird changes on that car this morning, Darrell. They were changing the steering box on that car. He wanted a quicker steering turning into the corner. Donnie Wingo, his crew chief, a little nervous about that change, but he said we have to do something. We have to give the driver what he's looking for. I believe, Larry, I believe that like last week with the eight car and Dale Jr., I think that's something that they're learning about the construction of these tires. They need a quicker steering box. They need a different caster setting. They We've got work to do in that area, and some of these guys are figuring it out quicker than others, and we got somebody coming on pit road. That'll be Joe Rutland in the James Finch 09. Two cars moving fast. Here they are, Casey Mears up to fourth place. And Greg Biffle has come from 13th to 5th. I mean, we can't forget Greg Biffle did win the Bush race here in October, and, and he's been pretty quick all week long here. And you, you can see uh, just up ahead of these guys, they're having a great run here fighting with each other. Right here is what I just get ready to tell you. You can see Jeff Gordon get ready to take the lead. He got a good run off of two back there and they're really closed on Ryan. Jeff's car is working exceptionally good right now. For more on the pole sitter, here's Matt. As Jeff Gordon dips on the inside to try to take that lead and does from Ryan Newman on lap two, Newman said the car is great, Matt. I really like it. Stewart has come from 19th to 8th. Now, is he talking about the car being loose or fast or the driver <laughs> being loose and fast? Because he is loose right now and going to the front. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. started 7th and runs right there. 
behind and Brian Victor. He was pretty happy with his car in yesterday practice. You know, they made a few adjustments on this morning because of the, the conditions changing, but pretty happy, much happier than he was a week ago at Las Vegas. Another car we're going to be watching, though, closely. Rusty Wallace in that two car, brand new race car, untested. He was kind of bouncing high yesterday. He was pretty happy. He's never led a lap on this configuration since 1997. He'd like to change that today. Jeff Gordon, your leader at Atlanta, Tony Stewart, has moved to fourth past Greg Biffle. He started back in 19th. Mr. Ryan Newman holding second, Casey Mears third, and Greg Biffle now in fifth. Take you back to our points leader, Matt Kenseth. Came in here with the second biggest point lead anybody's enjoyed after three races, uh, not since Cale Yarborough. Back in 1977, has anybody had this kind of lead? He has come from 30th to 11th. Makes him the biggest mover of the race. Ahead of Tony Stewart, Kurt Busch, Jamie McMurray, and Jeff Burton. Actually, Kenseth now up in 10th position. He's past Dale Jarrett. Now our singular virtual crew chief question. You can vote from your singular wireless phone by sending text message box to phone number 191 or visit foxsports.com. You know, another car that has moved into the top 10 is his teammate, Kurt Busch, in the 97 car. He's up tonight, started back in 20th. This is a backup car. Right before practice ended, before qualifying on Friday, they crashed on the backstretch. He had to qualify this car without any practice, but because they presented the car with the engine they were going to race for qualifying, he was able to qualify 20th. Kurt did not know that. He thought they had to go to the rear of the field. He said, if I'd have known that, I'd have tried a little harder, but DW looks like he's got a pretty good race car. I tell you, Tony Stewart, did Jeff better enjoy his lead because I don't think it's going to last long. Tony Stewart is mowing them down right now, and uh, his car is handling on the bottom. Jeff's handling on the top. And speaking of Jeff, what's up, Hammond? DW, one thing I noticed about Stewart this morning, I went through the garage area. Crew Chief Greg Zippadelli was making some fine tune adjustments right there at the end of uh, the morning. What they wound up doing was adjusting the camera just a little bit, just a little bit of a caster adjustment. They said they were trying to get the car a little bit better on entry. Said so they were pretty good in the final practice. Went back, did some conversation with Tony, worked on it all night long, came up with the right solution. And so far, she looks like she's pretty quick. But DW, we were talking earlier, I think that's something all of these teams have to continue work on is front end geometry, just like we talked about the steering box on Jamie McMurray's car. Again, camber is the amount of lean to the, to the tire to get the full footprint of the tire on the ground through the corners as well as the straightaways. Caster is a driver feel. You, you run caster split, more in the right front than the left front, and I think they're having to find what this new tire configuration is looking for. Yeah, camber makes the tires happy, caster makes the driver happy. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. <laughs> you got to work on both of them. Three quarters of the battle is making the driver happy. <laughs> <laughs> Dick Bergren. Well, last fall, Jeff Gordon won the race using the same car he is driving today. He's been almost completely silent on the radio. All he has said so far is that the car is a little loose, but it's really good off turn two. Thanks, Dick. Need to make that driver happy because the tires don't talk back. And we talked about hits and misses. You've seen some of the fellows moving up. Here are some who may have missed the setup. Elliot Sadler, Kevin Harvick, Brian Vickers, uh, the outside pole sitter, Scott Riggs, Bobby Labonte. Steve? Mike, just listen to Elliot Sadler. He's gone from fifth all the way back to 37th. He says the car is not loose. It's extremely loose, and it feels like it's rolling over on the right front. And the sad part about it is this thing has that green flag look right now about it. And when a car's not working, Daryl, it can get way in the way. Watch Elliot Sadler's 38. Oh, yeah, and watch what happens to it right there. Whoa, go, 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 go away. <laughs> get out from behind me now. And all this is happening at about 180, 185 miles per hour. But, Larry, it sounds to me like, and you know this, that if I was in that car and it's rolling over on the right front, I'm going to be screaming for a spring rubber in that right front spring to stand that up a little bit. Maybe that'll help it. Yeah. And I did say screaming, because if I'm that loose, I'm definitely squealing right now. Mr. Newman, Mr. Stewart on line one. This is for second place. And Ryan Newman's running about the middle of the racetrack in the 12 car. Tony Stewart, watch here, going off into one and two. I'm sure he'll take that thing right to the bottom of the racetrack. He actually was about a lane up behind Ryan Newman, but he's really been hugging the white line down in three and four. 
probably haven't, Larry, when you catch up, I know these guys, that we're not hearing arrow push with that smaller rear spoiler, but uh, the, the car in front of you here, you don't get a lot of draft, but at 180, 90 miles an hour, it is going to affect your car some. So he has to find the place where he can set him up and pass him. That time, Tony Stewart, in the 20 and 3 and 4, he was right around the bottom. Ryan Newman running about the middle of the racetrack. Yeah, yesterday, the high line in 1 and 2 was good, and the low line in 3 and 4 was good. And so you kind of play with that to see what works. And also running up there on the high side, it keeps the RPMs up. It keeps the motor running nice and free. But right here, I think he may get a run right here in the middle of three and four. You almost got to get that fender, that quarter panel right there coming off turn four. Yeah, you got to clear him because you need the whole racetrack when you come off the bottom right there to go all the way out to the wall. And if there's somebody there, you just about got to squeeze up and let him, and let him go. So you really, momentum's what you're looking for now. Tony's trying to get enough momentum up to get a slide job, put a slide job on the Ryan. And he got behind the lap car of Kirk Schilmer during the 72. And look at the ground he loses going down the back stretch. Another good reason to run high. Out of the race, Joe Rutman and Todd Bodine. Andy Hillenberg, whose car stalled on the pace lap, will enter the race this time by. Jeff Gordon, your leader. The Golden Corral 500 on Fox is presented by Gillette Mach 3 Turbo Champion, the only razor used by the Gillette Young Gun. And brought to you by the Home Depot, NASCAR's home improvement warehouse. By Coca-Cola, let's make it real. And by Dodge, you can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns, Dodge. Thirty-four laps complete. Jeff Gordon, your leader. Second place, Tony Stewart. Working his way underneath Ryan Newman. And two X open wheelers duking it out for second here. Stewart prevails. Watch Craig Biffle against two really good cars, Rusty Wallace and Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, Rusty kind of slid up in front of uh, Jimmy there, and when he did, he probably messed them both up. And uh, Biffle was wide open. Took and full advantage of the situation. Gordon, our leader, you see Greg Biffle there in fifth, and now he's going to have a time holding off his Roush Ford stablemate, the next Tell Cup point leader, Matt Kenseth. Matt Kenseth in his 17 car, he's been getting about a car lap here for the last few laps. He's on his teammate right now, Greg Biffle in the 16 car, Kenseth right now in six, Biffle in the 16 in fifth. Matt Kenseth's car looking a lot like Tony Stewart's car, the 20, right around the bottom of the racetrack. He got trapped behind the lap car of Andy Hillenberg that just came out a few laps ago. You know, to show you how fast these cars are, particularly when you're up front, and what these guys like to talk about is clean air. Uh, that's uh, Jeff Gordon, and he just put a lap on Ricky Rudd, who is running back in the 34th position. So uh, the cat, they're getting, they're getting around here in a hurry and catching up with the rear of the field. Rudd's Ford Racing onboard camera. That's Jeff Gordon disappearing in the distance. Eighth place, Jimmy Johnson and the man who's been runner-up the last two weeks, Casey Kane in that number nine Dodge. Now, the fellow who used to drive that car, Bill Elliott, first race he has not been in in Atlanta in a quarter century. He's running a limited schedule. He's here. He has been Casey Kane's driver coach but not in the race today at his hometown track. This was just one of those races where it just seemed different without Bill Elliott being introduced at driver introduction. You know, Daytona was one of them. The Daytona 500, I think, here is another one. It just seemed different without his name being called out. I know where he is. I do, too. I found him. <laughs> Next door in the PRN I, I asked him if he was trying to work his way up here, and he said, oh, no, I don't. that's not for me, but I, I see he's right next door. Seven car, he's pulling right up behind Casey Kane in the nine, Jimmy Johnson in the 48. A lot like his teammate Matt Kenseth, he's running right around the bottom of the racetrack. Like all the Roush cars are working good on the bottom, and he can put his foot in it and he can just stay in it. So he goes by Dale Earnhardt Jr. right now. That was a battle for 10th. Now, right behind them is Jamie McMurray in 12th place. Half a dozen dodges in the top dozen of this race at 40 laps. Matt? McMurray on the move, start of the day in 22nd. Jamie will tell you that he and Crucci Donnie Wingo have great chemistry. Jamie will start a sentence, Donnie will finish it. He said, though, you tend to raise your expectation 
wins and you run well. Two straight top fives, but they've struggled all weekend. He sat down last night, took out a sheet of paper, made a list of 11 things, including that steering box that Larry Mack talked about, and said, this is what we need to do to fix our race car. This morning, they compared their sheets, almost identical, except for that steering box. Jamie said that if we don't run well, it's not going to be because of the steering box. Even if it is, I'm not going to give Donnie that we should have fixed that. Right now, the car, a little free from the center off, but he is on the move, Jeannie. Well, we talked a little bit earlier about Kurt Busch making the engine change this weekend. There was a scare for the 25 of Brian Vickers on Saturday. An oil shower caused by a broken drive shaft right at the end of the early morning practice session. It punctured the oil tank. The good news was the engine was okay, so they left it alone because he wanted to start second. NASCAR gave him a little extra time to work on the car on Saturday and again this morning, but they can't wait for a break to work on the car again. Complaining that the car is still very, very, very loose as we watch him drop down the speed charts. Dick? Kevin Harvick had a great start to his cup career here. In March of 2001, he won his first ever start, then finished third that November. But today, he's having a tough day. He started in eighth position. He is on pit road right now. The problem with the car, tight, tight, very tight. They've got to fix it so he can drive it. Let's explain the timing of this pit stop, Darrell, why he would stop right now. Well, based on what I saw yesterday in the truck race, uh, and it, plus he just went a lap down, so he might as well come to pit road, get some tires, and hopefully make that back up. But what I saw in the truck case race yesterday, at about 50, 55 laps, the right rears were gone. And so uh, he probably is not too far away from making his normal pit stop, but the timing was right. He got lapped coming to the pits. Yeah, I think these teams are about 10 or 12 laps away from that green flag stop. Now, what Kevin Harvick and that group really needs is to make this full cycle of green flag stops and not get trapped by a caution. The man who just turned the fastest lap of the race thus far, Casey at the bat. <laughs> the 23-year-old phenom has been his second two weeks in a row, Casey Kane. 44 laps complete in the Golden Corral 500 presented by Gillette Mach 3 Turbo. Fox welcomes you back to the Atlanta Motor Speedway, and this is a Visa race break, and Tony Stewart moving up to second in points making his move here, Jeff Hammond, working the inside of the track. He has definitely been running that low line and making it work. He's putting a lot of guys down a lap and working his way up through traffic. He's really looking strong. Moved up from six to second in points after the Las Vegas race. Here holding off Ryan Newman. And moments ago, after Jeff Gordon had had the lead, then Tony Stewart took the lead from Jeff Gordon, passing him on lap 46, and at the moment, Tony Stewart leading Jeff Gordon on lap 51. And the thing is, right now, Chris, you notice, he's down on that white line, about 24 cars up on the high side. A couple of other things worth pointing out. Casey Kane, who started 12th, the rookie, all the way up to 4th, and Matt Kenseth, who qualified 30th, up and back between the 8 and 6 spot, currently sliding at 10. Chris, one of the things right now that's real interesting, teammates right here, Bobby Labonte on the high side, you see the leader, Tony Stewart, right now, getting ready to put him down a lap. Undoubtedly, they do not have the same setup on both these cars. And, of course, both uh, Joe Gibbs' cars and Bobby Labonte, six-time winner here, no driver active, has won more. This has been a Visa race break. Let's check in with Steve Burns for more on Bobby Labonte. Steve? Well, Chris, Bobby Labonte, as much success as he's had at this racetrack, says, I just can't get comfortable. I'm tight in the middle. Loose on the exit of the corners. We go upstairs to Mike Joy. Thanks, Steve. And that is a huge surprise that Labonte, who has won here five times since this track was reconfigured, should go a lap down this early. He hadn't gone a lap down yet, and it's not, it hadn't been, I mean, Tony's right there all over him, and he might get him right here, looks like, but Bobby has put up a violent effort to, valiant effort to keep him from getting by, and you see, he's fighting right back out on the outside. Brian Vickers in the 25 car. He comes to pit road, gets his four tires. Again, these guys, as they go a lap down, what they're doing, they're going ahead and make their pit stop. As we see Casey Kane in the nine car was running in fourth position. He comes to get his four tires. What we're seeing on the left of the screen is, I think, the first indication we've seen this season of true team racing. Tony Stewart, the fastest car on the racetrack, he doesn't want to put his teammate a lap down if he can help it. Matt is in Casey Kane's pit. Casey Kane hits pit road in the fourth position. He said early in that run, the back of the car was not working enough into the racetrack, and the front was not good either. But as the run progressed, the car came back to him. One of the fastest, if not the fastest, car at the end. No changes, a tick slow on the left.
half run. But you know, the thing about it, watching Tony Stewart in the 20 and Bobby Labonte in the 18, I'm sure they're fixing to make their pit stops. There's no reason for Tony Stewart to push the envelope right here. He has a two and a half second lead. And remember, if he's in front of his teammate when the caution comes out, the field's frozen. Bobby's not back on the lead lap, but he would get the free pass since he's the first car lap down behind the leader. Second place car on pit road, Jeff Gordon. Ryan Newman as well in 12 car. Stop right in a box here, but four tires. Dick Bergeron. Well, Jeff had just come on the radio a couple a spin, of laps ago, Kenson. Mike, and said Dick, that the point leader had spun coming on to pit road. This is huge. Yeah, he, he was past the commit cone as well, so he's got all kinds of penalties. Spinning on pit road, past the commit cone, all kinds of problems, DW. And all this is happening under green. Yeah, I think what happened is when uh, Gordon and some of the other front runners started to come to pit road, they must have hollered at him a little late because he was coming off a of turn four way too fast to make it on the pit road. A rare mistake for the defending cup champion, and the official will signal that. They have new pit road signals for the officials, similar to used by the NFL, and that is Those being signaled. the brakes, so the front's one stop, it locked up a little bit, and then the rear's just locked up. Just one stop, something's wrong with them. I even put, put it in there. Well, there's the answer for Matt Kenseth as to what happened, and he took the cones with him. The penalty will be a drive-through at pit road speed for Matt Kenseth. Which very well will put him a lap down under green. As you see, Tony Stewart in a 20 car, he's coming to pit road. Jeannie. Well, Jimmy Johnson out of the track complaining the car was loose, but it was getting better. There was a promise when they came in for the pit stop to get rid of some tape to take care of business. Bobby Gordon has taken over the lead here. Well, you've been running under green, and you, your brakes are cold. And uh, so when you come down to, down here for the first time, and the brakes are cold, you haven't been using them at all, and you get on them a little hard, you see you're going too fast. He's way out of line there. You see smoke. He's locking up the brakes, but he gets really hard on the brakes, and that locks up the rear tires and spins him out. What about the transition right there from the track to pit road? Does the car drop off and, oh. and lose weight on the back? Yeah, that's always a problem on any racetrack, and particularly if you're if you're overcooking the entrance. So Kenza spins around. Officially, he is charged with a violation of the commitment line and not driving between the cones. So now Robbie Gordon surrenders the lead to make his pit stop in the singular Chevy. And right now, Matt Kenseth is a lap down to the leader. So what his goal now will to be to become the first car lap down where we we'll get a caution, he can get the pardon, the free pass. Yeah, he, you know, he's got a good enough car that he'll be able to do that, I believe. And uh, this is a penalty and a problem I think that team can overcome before the day is over with. So Tony Stewart becomes the big leader in green flag pit stops. He now enjoys a 1.3 second advantage over Jeff Gordon. Dick Bergman. Look at Matt Kenseth's left front tire, Mike. You got something like this, it's pretty tough to hang on to it. Right Ooh. down to the courts. And you know, I tend to believe maybe some of that might have happened as he was sliding those brakes, DW, coming on the pit road. Yeah, I think that white all the way around there, that's the cords of the tire, the, and uh, that's not a good thing. So we've had one round of green flag pit stop, 61 laps complete in the Golden Corral 500, presented by Gillette, Mach 3 Turbo. Golden Corral 500 on Fox, presented by Gillette Mach 3 Turbo, is brought to you by Budweiser. It's time for a fresh one. Grab a Budweiser. The race is on. laps just past 100 miles and Tony Stewart's lead over Jeff Gordon has climbed to three and a half seconds. 
He's gained about two seconds, or put about two more seconds on Jeff Gordon in the 24 in about four or five laps. Well, there's no question. If your car will hook the bottom like his is, that's the shortest way around. You're going to make up a lot of time, but he seems to be the only one that can consistently hang the left wheels on that white line. Casey Kane remains one second behind Gordon. Greg Biffle, another two seconds back with Ryan Newman. Casey Mears, 11 seconds off the lead. Then Kurt Busch, Jimmy Johnson, Rusty Wallace, Jeremy Mayfield, the top 10. Ward Burton has been fighting the flu all week, and now, to run at you now one away. he may be fighting a left front tire run. It's a little it's a little bit bumpy you can see those dark spots in the racetrack those are little bumps in the racetrack little dips in the racetrack when that car goes through there it has such a soft left front spring and you got so much rebound pulling down on the body of that car to hold the nose down it's sucking the tire up in the fender and as we see it's not rubbing now that was right after pit stop when they have the air pressures down and that's when it's more prone to, to rub is before the air pressures gain it's, I'm sorry, Mike. it's annoying. I mean, it rubs and it kind of wants to jerk the wheel out of your hand, but you hang on to her and it'll come over. It'll come around. At least that's what Hammond always said. Just hang on to it. It'll come around. Stewart, the leader, Jeff Gordon, Casey Kane, Greg Biffle, and Ryan Newman, who started this race from the pole, his 20th career bug pole, is fifth. Matt? Newman's car was good early on, but then he developed a loose condition and then it went loose and tight. So his team led by Matt Borland. They made an air pressure adjustment on the left side tires to help the tightness in the center of the corner. And they made a wedge adjustment on their stop back on lap 57 to help the loose on exit. Three times he's won from the pole. Today, they need to do a little more work to go for number four. We talked in the opening about hit and miss and not having many opportunities to adjust on your race car, especially if it's way off. I mean, Tony Stewart in the 20, he just put Michael Waltrip in the 15 and Jeff Green in the 43 a lap down. That was the 19th and 20th place cars. He's already in less than 75 laps put half this field a lap down. No opportunities to catch up or make your cars better. We've been caution free through the first 73 laps. Now, Dick Berger and Jeff Gordon continues to lose ground to the race leader, Tony Stewart, but he has a firm hold on second for the moment. Yeah, he does indeed, Mike, but he has twice called on the radio and said that his race car is loose, and I did look at the four tires that came off his car after the pit stop, and the right rear on that car was almost down to the cords. There were a couple of places around the tire where I could just see if he didn't have much more, he could have run on that right rear tire. Thanks, Dick. Jeff Gordon's about to get busy because Casey Kane is coming. Can you believe, Daryl, what this young fella has done in a Winston, or rather a Nextel Cup career and Winston Cup last year career that includes only a handful of career starts? No, and this could be a really big day for him. He could run second to somebody besides Matt Kenseth. <laughs> I still think he needs to meet Harry Gant <laughs> yeah. if he's tired of second place. Nothing wrong with second right now. Just keep doing it. But what Ray Everham has been telling people, this kid reminds him of another kid that he hooked up with about 12 years ago. And, in fact, that kid right now is running second, Jeff Gordon, in the 24 car. Get Dave Blaney back there in 14th position for Bill Davis in an unsponsored Dodge battling Mark Martin for 14. Our apologies to Mark after a fine finish last week. We had hoped to interview all the top five, but had to leave the air before we were able to get to him. So, sorry, Mark. Great run, and looks like he's picking up right where he left off last week in Las Vegas. You know, we keep talking about this aero package that we have this year, the smaller rear blade, and what's it going to do to the cars. I just saw Tony Stewart get up under Joe Nemechek. I think Joe would probably wish he had that three-quarters of an inch back on that rear spoiler because uh, Tony got right up under the back of him. And uh, watch this. He goes down into turn three, puts the nose right up under the back of Joe. Now, watch back. Look at Joe's car. Just the back end comes around up the hill he goes and all you're doing is hanging on for dear life and he's saying call tony and tell him i'll get out of the way next time don't do that anymore <laughs> 
Casey Kane trying so hard to catch Jeff Gordon, and I believe he brushed the wall last time out of turn four. Yeah, I mean, I know next week we're going to the racetrack that will reach out and grab you, but I think what happens, you, you think you're in a rhythm here, Daryl, and you, your car's feeling good, and all of a sudden it just kind of jumps sideways on you on the exit of the corner. You talked about your hot spot in turn two. It can actually happen in turn four, too. Yeah, turn four, you got a lot of speed through turns three and four because the, you, you're running out into the, the turn opens up for you, and you really come off a turn high or low, whichever way, and you just run out there and run out of racetrack. Let's see if Casey Kane did get a piece of the concrete here. Ah, that's perfect. Oh, that, was, yeah. that was perfect. He just, <laughs> he just narrowed that thing up a little bit. It'll be faster yet. He just put the Darlington stripe on it a week early. Jeff Gordon and Casey Kane, second and third to Tony Stewart, who is five seconds ahead of them. Greg Biffle, two and a half seconds back of this duo, then Ryan Newman and Casey Mears. 79 laps complete in the Golden Corral 500. Welcome back. NASCAR on Fox from Atlanta. Tony Stewart, 5.3 seconds up on Casey Kane. As here's the pass for second place. Casey Kane underneath Jeff Gordon. Greg Biffle is fourth. Ryan Newman fifth. Casey Mears, Kurt Busch, Rusty Wallace, Jimmy Johnson, and Jamie McMurray. Here are the Dodge front runners at 85 laps, led by Casey Kane in second, and pole sitter Ryan Newman. Matt? Last year when Casey Kane started driving Bush full time, he went to another overwheel star for advice, Tony Stewart. But during the offseason, he went to his teammate, Bill Elliott, for advice. Elliott gave him the best advice of all. He said, you are a very talented young man. Even though you are very talented, there are a number of drivers who are just as talented. To be successful at this level, you must be committed. So Casey started watching past next to a cup races. He works out four to five days a week, even has gone on a great nutritional plan. He's done everything Ray Everett has asked. And I guess it kind of falls in an old line from Roger Penske. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity, and he is preparing himself for success. And they have found it pretty much this year so far. Steve? Well, Matt, Greg Biffle having a fine run, listed in fourth position. He only has two cup starts here. His best finish of 13th, and he's in a brand new race car that has never been tested. But, again, they are having a good run. He's been talking to crew chief Doug Richard about different changes to make. When they stop next, they'll take a half pound out of both left side tires. Dick Bergeron. Jeff Gordon is running in third spot, but he has dropped well back, seven or so seconds behind, and he has said on the radio on lap 82, we've got to get the car off the right rear. On lap 84, he wanted to know what the tires looked like. He said the thing is bad already. On lap 85, he said, I've got to take care of the right rear. I know I'm killing it. Jeannie? Well, Dick, after 70 weeks in the top 10 in points, Jimmy Johnson fell out of favor with a crash at Rockingham. And you think they're not feeling the pressure on the 48 team, and it's not all about the chase for the championship. The point standings determines garage location, the best spots reserved for the best. Kind of a daily reminder at the track just how good you are. Imagine if you're a salesperson and you go to the office every day and the staff rotates based on your performance. So here it is the threat of maybe having to share a garage or work in a smaller space. Self-esteem definitely on the line. That'll push you a little harder come Sunday. Chad Canals telling his crew, hey, nobody try to be a superstar today. Just do your job. Pay attention to detail. We'll get it back. Thanks, Jeannie. Jimmy Johnson's about to have company. Yes, he is. Rusty Wallace in that two car. I've been watching him. He started back in 11th position. He's back there in eighth. I really paid close attention to his green flag pit stop while ago. They have made changes on that pit crew after every race, but this week they brought his crew chief back from last year, not to be crew chief. Larry Carter's still the crew chief, but Bill Wilburn, who's been over helping Brendan Gone, he's back changing tires. They made up ground on that green flag stop. Wilbur's about as good as they get on the right front. I mean, he does a whale of a job, and, uh, you know, that's what he did before he was crew chief, so he's right back in a, in a customary position. Now, this race for 7th, 8th, and ninth, just ahead of them, Casey Mears in the NASCAR Top 10 for the first time in his brief cup career. Having a nice little run. I mean, that, that, that team has really, really stepped it up from last year. 
Now, Matt Kenseth, we had spinning onto pit road during green flag pit stops, and he finds himself one lap down, plus a long way around the racetrack. Yeah, I mean, I've been watching his lap times. His lap times are better than Tony Stewart's. I mean, that last lap, he was a half a second quicker than Tony Stewart. But right now, he's still a lap down after pinning, spinning on pit road, having to do the drive-through penalty. Right now, he's in 22nd. The first car a lap down is 17th. So what he wants to do, he needs to get up six positions to be the first car a lap down where he can get the free pass should we get a caution. He needs a caution, but he needs to get to that position before he gets the caution. Yeah, and he's getting it, he's getting it in a hurry, too, because uh, he's closing right up on the back of Ryan Newman and uh, several other cars that he's going to make a pass on here pretty quick. And we're not that far away from some more green flag pit stops. Stewart flashes by with a 4.2 second lead on Casey Kane. Six and a half seconds on Jeff Gordon, seven and a half on Greg Biffle. Top of your screen, number of laps until the next scheduled pit stop should we stay under green. Earnhardt Jr. flashes past in 13. Came into last week's race as the point leader. Had enough trouble to keep him in and out of the garage all day, but in truth only ended up one position worse than if they just made short pit stops and continued to work on the car throughout the day. Matt? Back on lap 57, Junior's team worked both on that loose exit condition and the tight. They have really mastered that loose on edge of the car to Junior's liking. He says, now I really don't want to make it too much more free. It's almost perfect. The problem, there's a lot of distance between Junior's 8 and Tony Stewart's 20. Hey, that eight car, Dale Earnhardt Jr., they had a very eventful week, but the problem is Dale Earnhardt Jr. is only about seven to eight seconds from being left. Tony Stewart, the 20 car, he is the leader as he just goes by Ricky Rudd again, but Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that group, not only did they try to go to Kentucky to figure out what their woes were at Las Vegas, they went to Bristol and tested for two days, had a great test. The biggest thing that came out of there, confidence back in him and that race team. Jeff Burton has just gone one lap down to Tony Stewart, and that leaves us 15 cars on the lead lap as we close in on 150 miles in Atlanta. Tony Stewart with a 3.4 second lead. He leads the list of the Coke family of drivers in this race. 15 cars on the lead lap. We've been caution free through 150 miles. Elliot Sadler has made a second pit stop, bolted on four new tires, and he rockets past Stewart. Here you see right there about 14 more laps. Tony Stewart, our leader in the 20 car there, went to 13 laps. And uh, this is when these guys will really start interrogating their drivers again. The crew chief said, okay, now, were you better that run? Were you the same? Was it worse? I'm sure if it was worse, the drivers already let them know that. <laughs> he would. A lot of that's going on already. Let's pick up the seventh place battle where Rusty Wallace and Jimmy Johnson continue to go at it. Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knauss have been noodling out what they'd like to do and what everybody else is doing. Jeff's just running right up against the fence at both ends. Uh, the 20 car, he's been glued to the bottom all day. Not one of the fastest cars out there. The 9 and the 20 are. Four. 20's been on the bottom. The 9, he's been up top most of the day. He did that last lap. That was a 31.67. That was a good lap. And what that is, that's Chad Knauss going over the times that Jimmy's running versus these guys. But that was his spotter, Chris Osborne, because that's just another role the spotter plays. He's on top of this roof. He can see all the different lines these other cars are running. And I always tell the spotter, listen, tell me things I can't see. Don't tell me things I can see. I, you know, I'll figure that out on my own. Tell me things I need to know that will help me. And what they're talking about there, they're just a few. That's Jimmy Johnson, the 48. And here we see Greg Biffle in the 16 coming to pit road. He's telling him we're close to another pit stop. Get me as much as you can till that pit stop. Now, Biffle is the first of the leaders. He gives up fifth place to pit, Steve. And Mike, he just told crew chief Doug Richard that they're a little bit too tight. So they're going to change. Go ahead and change those four tires and make an air pressure adjustment. That's the only adjustment to the 16 car. Just a little bit too tight. Seven seconds. So important.
important on these green flag stops. It's important under caution, but you just cannot have any mistakes like Matt Kenseth made on that first green flag stop. But what Matt was trying to do was, you know how we always talk about ins and outs. He's trying to maximize that speed at the end of pit road. That you can save a lot of time right there if you can get on there nice and fast. Darrell, let's back to that race for seventh. Jimmy Johnson, Rusty Wallace, and with them are some lap cars like Derek Cope who are very fast on new tires. What's it like when suddenly you're racing cars that are fast, like there goes Scott Riggs, that you haven't been racing all day? Well, you start hollering at the crew chief. You know, how much longer I got to stay out here? You know, I'm getting run over. I'm getting these guys are going around me on the left, going around me on the right. I don't need to be racing these guys. When am I going to pit? <laughs> Jeannie? Well, that sounds like a similar conversation was just on the radio, the 48, Chad Canal saying, come on, just get into the pit because these guys are killing us out here. Just minutes ago when we saw Rusty Wallace go right by the 48 car, Jimmy was saying, look, I'm having problems arcing it into turn three. I just cannot get it to turn into turn three. Matt? Casey Kane has cut Tony Stewart's lead now at only 2.9 seconds. Casey says the car is loose in the center, but it continues to get better. He started the day out on the bottom, and he heard Chris Osborne, Jimmy Johnson's spotter, say that he hit climb to the high side. His to Steve. Well, Matt, eight laps ago, crew chief Greg Zipidelli told his driver, Tony Stewart, in that 20 car, you just ran your fastest lap of the day. Tony replied by saying it's just a little bit tight right now, but it did the same exact thing at the same exact point in our last tire run. Two ex-open wheelers have just set their own personal fastest lap of the race just now. Uh, Casey Kane, Dave Blaney. Hmm. But I tell you, going back to Casey Kane in the nine car, we're looking at him right now, the second place car. Darryl, I don't know if I, if I was Tommy Bowen, if I'd do many adjustments to that race car, because what's happening, it's a little loose near the end of a run as it burns the fuel load off, gains that front percentage, it tightens up. If they try to tighten that thing up for the early part of a run, then they may have it too tight for late in a run. Yeah, I, I, I agree, Larry. Uh, and, and I'm interested to see how that all works out as far as Casey's communication with Tommy down there. We got the point of the that are on pit road. Ryan Newman's in, Jimmy Johnson's in as well. Let's go to Newman's pit. Another wedge adjuster for Pulsiter Ryan Newman is the guys on the left side. To Jeannie. Well, Jimmy Johnson finally coming in for this pit stop, Chad, making him stand a little bit longer than he might have liked the car a bit tight. Of course, he's getting four tires and the air pressure just going to loosen this car up. But you know, guys, let's just follow up. Mike, you asked the question a while ago about guys out there on fresh tires versus your old tires. That's another role the spotter plays. He has to let you know fresh tires coming about 10 car lengths back where you can anticipate where you need to go to get out of his way. Michael Waltrip in. He's a lap down to Tony Stewart, and so is more than half of this field. Right now, with green flag pit stops uh, in the midst, 11 cars running on the lead lap. Boy, Kurt Busch in the 97 car almost did the exact same thing that his teammate Matt Kenseth did coming to pit road. He was sideways, but he didn't spin out. Kane did. It. Here, here comes a. No, that's Casey Kane. He did. He. They're all trying to get on pit road with a lot of speed. Remember, you're going through the corner about 170 miles per hour. You keep he's, it hung out. He's hung out way back there. <laughs> Steve? Mike Kurt Busch on pit road. They've been battling a loose and then tight race car all weekend long. They're going to make some pretty big adjustments. They're going to put one round of fight in. They're also going to put a spring rubber in the left rear. Matt? A slight track bar adjuster for Casey Kane, a round and a half. As Jim Pullman goes to work on that left front, Casey said the car was still a little free in the center of the corner. Service complete. 16.6 seconds. Meanwhile, Tony Stewart leads Jeff Gordon now by almost eight seconds. But one lap ago, got into this with Scott Wimmer. Just coming off a of turn two over there. And uh, I tell you, when the tires get worn and it's a little slick over there, you get the, you, you make contact. They got away with it, but you don't always get away with it. No, because the last thing you want to do is beat a right front fender up on your race car here at this place as fast as the speeds are. When Tony runs as low as he does and you got a car on the outside of you down there, it can suck you right into it. Rusty Wallace, fourth place car to pit road. Casey Mears, the 41 car as well. Another lead lap car. Dick? 
having a terrific day here in this number 41 automobile. This was a planned pit stop. The car just a little bit loose. He's doing a great job today, Mike. He has been running in the top five all day long. This is surely one of the best rides that he has had in his entire career and backing it up from that Las Vegas run last weekend. See you. Well, Dick, Tony Stewart saying just get me a little more rotation in the center. Free me up just in the center. So they're going to make just a small air pressure adjustment. Stewart is on pit road. Todd Foster and Mike Lingerfeld change tires. Dick. Jeff Gordon also in. He wants the crew to get that car not to run on the right rear tire as much as it had been. He said he could just about hang on to it. He's going to get four fresh ones. Steve Burns. Tony Stewart exits pit road. Dick, they got it full of gas and a good pit stop for Tony Stewart. Jeff Gordon in. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Dave Blaney. Dale Jarrett. Ward Burton. Matt. And the Bud Guys waiting for Dale Earnhardt Jr. to peel off as he does. Three, two pits away. Jr. says the car almost perfect. I really don't think we need to make any adjustments, but after further consultation between his car chief cousin, Tony Uri Jr., a wedge adjustment as the point leader, Matt Kenton, down a lap. A tough day for the 17 guys. He's in as well. Jr.'s down and away. You know, if they make Tony Stewart's car any better, he's going to be in his own zip code. Yes, he is, especially if we keep this green flag look about it. Mark Martin in the six car back on pit road. But how about this? Casey Kane, nine. This will be a battle for the lead right here because we've cycled through these green flag stops. The common denominator between Stewart and Kane is Steve Lewis, who has fielded USAC open wheel cars for Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, uh, Ryan Newman. Uh, that's the common denominator among those three drivers. Casey Kane, of course, ran in midget sprint cars and Silver Crown. He was a 2000 USAC midget champ and 2000 Silver Crown Rookie of the Year. He was in open wheel cars just four seasons ago. Spent a couple years in the Bush Series, and now he's the rookie phenom of Nextel Cup. And right now, even right after putting fresh tires on, we already see these two guys, Tony Stewart and 20, go to the bottom of the racetrack, Casey Kane in the nine. Now, he followed Tony through three and four that time. The last time through one and two, though, Casey's been running in the high side. That nine car looks a little tight, Larry. Looks like he washes up coming out of the turn. I hope they didn't make adjustments on it. it was pretty good while ago. Stewart's career trying to overhaul Elliott Sadler in the McDonald's Drive Championship, fueled by Powerade. The Golden Corral 500 on Fox, presented by Gillette Mach 3 Turbo, is brought to you by Ford, the official truck of NASCAR. By Lowe's, where you'll find all your home improvement needs. Lowe's, improving home improvement. By Wendy's, new spinach chicken salad. It's better here. And by MGM Pictures, Walking Tall, starring The Rock. In theaters April 2nd, rated PG-13. One hundred twenty five laps complete. Tony Stewart ahead of Casey Kane now by one point two seconds. And Greg Biffle has climbed a third as caution comes out for debris in turn number one. The field freezes with 13 cars on the lead lap and Dave Blaney in the 23. The first car one lap down. So the caps off all the tires. He will get the pardon and the free pass around. We'll take a minute to explain about this free pass rule. Mike Helton, NASCAR president, clarified it after the confusion last Saturday. The field will get gathered up behind the caution car. The pits will not be opened the first time by. This allows rescue and safety crews to respond quickly if needed, and it means that the drivers don't have to rush to catch up to the pace car. They'll have now a full lap and a half to do that. Pit stops for the lead lap cars, pit stops for the lap down cars, then Blaney gets the free pass to start at the tail end of the longest line. Back here at the Atlanta Motor Speedway, pit stops underway. Tony Stewart just came to pit road. The only change for him, besides four tires, a cleaner windshield. One of the tear-offs off the number 20. Otherwise, no changes. Matt? 
Steve, a great stop by Casey Kane's crew. A wedge adjustment down one round on the left side. The car is good, needs to be better. Still a little too free in the center, but Tommy Baldwin, Dick just wants to nip a little bit at a time, not over adjust that Dodge. Well, Jeff Gordon, very unhappy with his race car. Just before he came in, he said the car is wicked loose going in. They have pulled the spring rubber out of the right rear. He said before that pit stop, I got nothing. Meanwhile, Casey has got a pinched nerve in his right shoulder and causing it to go to sleep. Car 41, Casey Mears. Jeannie? Well, the 48 of Jimmy Johnson in a bit of a pickle here, guys. He's still very tight in, but his crew chief saying to him, look, I don't know how to make these adjustments that will not make you so tight in, but that won't make you so loose off. So that's what they've been trying to work out these past two stops. Another spring rubber into the left rear, and they put another piece of tape on that lower grill, closed it completely off. Lap down cars pitting now, and there are a bunch of them. There are going to be 16 cars on the lead lap, plus the 23 of Dave Blaney, who will get the free pass just before we go back to green. We're under the first caution of the day for debris in turn one. That caution was a huge break for Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Rusty Wallace. They were not that far from going a lap down. Tony Stewart, Casey Kane, Greg Biffle came off pit road the way they came in. 129 laps in the Golden Corral 500. Welcome back to Atlanta. Tony Stewart in the lead. Pre-race warm-ups. How do some teams do it? We're trying to hit one out of the park. It's out of here. Now, where'd that bat end up? Our WebMD safety update with Dick Bergman. Wausau, Wisconsin's Joe Piat changes rear tires for Ryan Newman. This 15-year veteran knows the value of safety, so when he goes over the wall, he wears a helmet, fire-resistant suit, gloves, knee pads, running shoes, but more important than any of that, physical conditioning, and he works out every week. Joe's in great shape. Joe, drop down. Give me 10. Oh, boy. He is in good shape. Whoa! <laughs> 14 of these cars are in good shape. They're in the outside lane. They're on the lead lap as we go back to green at lap 133. 22 car Wimmer up there. He's punted tires. He didn't get a very good start there. And what will be interesting to see now that they had their first caution. We talk about the comers and the goers who was able to make major adjustments on their car and see if they can get better. But while we're waiting to see if they get better, what do you think? Let's make a major adjustment on our audio. Let's crank it up. Ryan Newman. This is at fourth place. Matt Kenseth. Look at that. Wow. Kenseth come off the two over there. I mean, he went right under Casey, and uh, I thought he was going to get Jamie, but didn't quite make it, but he got him now, and I tell you, he is on a mission. He's going to redeem himself. After his miscue, entering the pits at lap 56, Kenseth dropped to 35th. He's been able to scramble back up to 17th, a lap down, and up front, Tony Stewart. Casey Kane, Greg Biffle, and Ryan Newman just got past Jeff Gordon. Yeah, and right now, the two cars that Matt Kenseth are racing is Robbie Gordon in the 31 car, Sterling Marlin in the 40. That's the two cars that's in front of him, in particular Robbie Gordon, who should the caution come out, he would get the free pass. I think it's only a matter of time. Yeah, this is one of those times when you know there's a good chance there can be a caution. The cars are bunched up. Uh, even if they don't have a wreck, they might knock, run into each other and knock some debris off. I definitely think they have made huge improvements on that 31 car of Robbie Gordon. Remember, his crew chief, Kevin Hamlin, was the crew chief for Kevin Harvick when he won that race that was a photo finish back in 2001, Kevin Harvick's first career win. Well, it was a real timely caution. A lot of these cars were way, way off, and it gave him a chance to adjust. Robbie's so, not a factor. We'll see some, uh, 
we'll see some cars that are probably going to run a lot better now after they got a chance to work on them. Now the lead lap cars after two rounds of green flag stops and this caution flag stop are Stewart, Casey Kane, Greg Biffle, you're watching that second place battle from our Quaker State aerial coverage, then Ryan Newman, Jeff Gordon, Jamie McMurray, Casey Mears, Kurt Busch, Jimmy Johnson, Mayfield, Earnhardt Jr., Jarrett, Rusty Wallace, and Blaney. Those are the lead lap cars. Kent's is, uh, let me tell you, Kent's is this coming. Uh, he is on fire right now. He just blew by uh, Jeff Gordon, and uh, he's up on the back bumper of the 12 car back there with the 31 in sight. Dick Bergman. Case, uh, uh, Matt Kenseth, rather, Mike, has been on the radio with his crew ever since that spin, and their goal, their entire focus, has been to get on the lead lap again. Right now, he has just one more car to pass, Robbie Gordon, and he will be the first car that's a lap down. If then there is a caution flag, that number 17 car, Matt Kenseth, is back on the lead lap with a fast race car, maybe fast enough to win it. Well, there's nobody better at coming from the back to the front than Matt Kenseth, and probably nobody who has more practice doing it. Well, and, and overcoming mistakes, whether they're by other people or by yourself, that's how you win championships, and that team has exemplified that for the last couple of years. Right, when Jimmy Johnson right here in the 48 car, he's in the ninth position, racing for the position in, in front of him there, which is Casey Mears in the 41 car. My apologies to Chris Andrews. He's actually the crew chief for Robbie Gordon. Kevin Hamlin moved from that team to Johnny Sauter's number 30 car at the end of last year, the beginning of this year. Junior battling uh, Brendan Gaughan, who is a lap down. Junior's got to feel pretty good about his car. I mean, this time last week, you know, he'd been in the garage about five times. So obviously that testing that he talked about over and over again uh, has paid off. And I tell you, I keep listening to him. He says, hey, folks, he's sending a message. I don't know if anybody's getting it but me, but he's saying we're going to have to spend some money on some testing teams. Now, were you kidding, Daryl, or do you have your helmet ready? No, I, no, I, I'm going to be a great test driver. Uh, you know, yep. I, I, I give good feedback. You can ask Ham and Ned. Now, there it is, the meat and the sandwich. Ryan Newman in the 12 car. Remember, he's running in fourth. The two guys he's racing right there, that is not for position, but those two guys are racing hard. We keep talking about it. Matt Kenseth, who is only thinks about an eighth of a lap away from taking this position away, that would put him up in 15th position, the first car, a lap down. As fast as he is right now, he could he could possibly go up there and pass our leader because he is he's mowing them down. Here he goes by Robbie right now. In other words, do it without the free pass. Yeah, just go on and get the lap back and let somebody else have the free pass. He may go get there, but I think the fastest car on the racetrack at the moment is Kurt Busch, who two laps ago blasted past Jimmy Johnson and one lap ago moved past Casey Mears. Uh, got Jeff Gordon as well. Kurt Busch is up to sixth place, and he's coming. Jeff Gordon by just coming out of turn two there. I don't know what they did to his car on that pit stop, but he is going backwards. I don't mean that literally. He's just falling back through the field. He's going to lose this spot right here to Dale Earnhardt Jr. That's a battle for eight. Dick Bergeron. Well, Gordon has been quiet on the radio so far. They certainly did a good deal of work on that last pit stop, pulling the rubber out of the right rear. They also had a wrench on each side of the car. But this is the longest he has been as Biffle goes for the lead. This is long as he has been all day long being off the radio. He's been quiet. Steve Burns. Now let's talk about Greg Biffle for a second as he just went into the lead. They took a half pound out of the left front tire on the last stop. In fact, just several laps ago, he said, Ooh, I think I'm going to go up and lead me a lap. His crew chief, Doug Richard, was saying, take it easy. This is a long run, long race, but I guess he ran out of patience. Time Biffle's led today, and it's the first time that a Ford has led today. In fact, coming into this race of 389 laps that Ford has led this year, Matt Kenseth had led all but five of those. <laughs> no and, doubt, my mind. And, and, and telling telling Biffle to take it easy, like telling a junkyard dog, don't bite an intruder. See another car that they continue to make adjustments and continue to go forward is Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car. He just went by Kurt Busch in the 97 to take the sixth position, and right now Kurt Busch has his hands full of Casey Mears in that 41 car. We got a fight up here for the lead again with the 20 and 16, and he did what he said he was going to do. Biffle did. We'll go up here and leave me a lap. 
And that's five points. Hey, Rusty Wallace slowing on the back stretch. Is that Rusty? Yep. Mm. And there's four gears in the transmission. The only one you cannot race without is fourth gear, Matt Yoakum. Larry Mack, earlier in the race, Rusty came on the radio and said, guys, it has popped out of gear. Luckily, he was able to get it back in gear, didn't lose any positions on the racetrack, but obviously that problem has multiplied. Casey Kane moves up to second. Caution is out for the second time today. Yay, Matt. And guess who will get the free pass and the pardon? Oh, Matt let me Kansas. guess. Our point leader. There you go, the 17 car. Gosh, he's lucky. Wouldn't you rather be lucky than be Oh, he is so lucky. I don't know how he does it. Get inside every lap. And that half I'm going to do it for you, and we need to do some more work on it. 21, did we take it out there, or did it stay the same? Now, just to clear things out, he cannot pit with the lead lap cars. He has to wait to the lap down cars, and he will have to start restart this race at the tail end of the longest line, but he's back on the lead lap. I'll take that, DW. I like it. I like I'm happy. It I'm happy again. Old 17 is smiling again. Debris on the back straightaway, likely from Rusty Wallace's transmission trouble, is what's put us under the second caution of the day. The field freezes with 13 cars on the lead lap back through Dave Blaney and Matt Kenseth to get the free pass. 150 laps complete, closing in on halfway here in Atlanta. You know, Mike, Larry, I like this. I like This is a good idea. Slowing these cars down, getting them behind the pace car, getting them grouped up, and then going into pits. You were just, in, and I do too, Darrell. I think it's, it's, it's a great way to go to not only to get order to the field, but to prevent anybody having to rush, and most importantly, to get the safety gear out on track as quickly as possible. Larry, you were just in the pits 20 laps ago. Are you coming? You Is better believe coming? it. Four <laughs> tires and adjustments. Yes, sir. No question. Because again, we only have, with Matt getting back on the lead lap, we only have 14 cars on the lead lap. But I mean, just look at the cars that we have a lap down. We have another nine or 10 cars that's a lap down. And they'll be fighting to get that free pass for the next caution. And Kenseth gets the free pass, so the cars a lap down. Well, one lap down will be Robbie Gordon, Sterling Marlin, Mark Martin, Ward and Jeff Burton, Bobby Labonte, Michael Waltrip, Joe Nemechek, Jeff Green, and Ricky Craven. And one thing about this uh, group in the field up like this is you got to be sure you watch for the open for the open the pit down there. Next week's NASCAR race menu brought to you by Wendy's Classic Hamburgers. It's better here. Saturday, the NASCAR Bush Series, presented by Yamaha at 12.30 Eastern on FX. And Sunday, America's Best Drivers, the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series racing at 1 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Here's Chris Myers. And some fans are rooting on the Nextel Cup Championship race and they're wishing our director Artie Kempner a happy birthday his 45th yep. birthday happy birthday Artie yes so he's the guy who annoys us in our ears yeah. we're trying to broadcast the race <laughs> with Jeff Hammond he's annoying us right now I'm Chris Myers in the Hollywood Hotel you know uh, Gibbs Racing has won what 17 of the last 15 races here in Atlanta seven 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 of the 15 Tony Stewart the leader right now but the story Matt Kenseth our points leader who went a lap down and has worked his way back up to the lead lap and working his way up the field what happens right now, these guys are in the habit panic. They've done their job like they're supposed to. Right now, Matt Kenseth and Robbie Reiser are on the same page on lap 132. They were lap down on 148. They got the free pass. They're back in this race, and they've got a very fast race car as we get ready to go to pit stops. This has been a Visa race break, and let's go down to the pits and check on uh, Matt Kenseth and the rest. Lead lap cars pit this time around, led by Tony Stewart, Casey Kane, Greg Biffle, Ryan Newman, Jamie McMurray. Steve. Should be a small adjustment for Tony Stewart's race car, Mike Joy. Uh, air pressure adjustment in the left rear tire. Gooch Patterson slams some gasoline in that car. Let's go to Matt. Casey Kane says he likes the direction that they are moving with his race car. He doesn't want to make any adjustments on this stop. He wants to go a full run and see what they should do on their next stop. A good solid stop. A little bit of trouble on that left rear. He's not going to make
to beat the 20 off pit road. It was close. Yeah, Matt, I almost believe he might have been able to pull that off, but Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car was pitted right in front of him. He had to turn dead right before he could get going. So not only Tony Stewart and that group getting the job done on the racetrack, so far they, they've been perfect almost 100% on pit road as well. You know, Larry, here's something different. They've moved that guy. See how far out into the uh, racetrack he is? That's the guy that says the pits are open. Because of the new procedure, they're being sure he usually stands behind that wall. They have moved him out there so that the drivers can see when the pit, pit road is open. Well, we all remember all that confusion at Martinsville back in the fall. This will help, you know, solve that problem. All right, lap down cars coming in. Matt. They are going to bring Casey Kane back down pit road. We told you it was awfully close on hitting all those lugs on the left rear. Joe Krushek is going to try to hit those lugs one more time. The good thing is they have lapped so many cars today, he's not going to have too far to go to get back up to Tony Stewart. Nick? Well, Matt Kenseth has just finished his service on pit road, and he will go back on the lead lap as a result of a genuine team effort. This pit crew has performed, as always, flawlessly on pit road. Kenseth has driven brilliantly, and that's the combination that was necessary to make him the first car a lap down when the caution flag came out. That'll allow him to go around and get back on the lead lap again, Mike. Now, Mike like what they'll do, they'll leave the nine out until there's one to go. They'll bring him to pit road, top him up, and that way uh, they get the lug nuts tight, get a little extra fuel in the car. A little casual contact between Sterling Marlin and Mark Martin as they left their pit boxes. Likely no damage from that. The Golden Crowd 500 presented by Gillette Mach 3 Turbo on Fox. The Golden Corral 500 on Fox presented by Gillette Mach 3 Turbo is brought to you by... UPS, the official express delivery company of NASCAR. We want to race the truck. People love the truck. One hundred fifty-four laps complete. Tony Stewart after pit stops. Still out front of Ryan Newman, Greg Biffle, Dale Earnhardt Jr. now fourth, and Jeremy Mayfield had a great stop and lines up for the restart fifth. Steve Burns. Well, Mike, get practice on Friday. Joe Nemechek's 01 Army car wasn't as fast as he wanted it to be, so the team changed springs. Each race car has four springs. They put in softer front springs, and that gave that car a lot more front grip. Just one of the ways the teams can make an adjustment here in the Nextel garage. We're ready for the green flag. That's this week's Craftsman adjustment as we get a green flag, and Tony Stewart jumps right out with it. Guy on the pole, you know, guy on the restart, he ought to get the jump because he wanted to set, he sets the pace, so he ought to get the jump. I'll tell you about talking about get the jump. Jeremy Mayfield in that 19 car, he made about 10 position jump on pit road. We even questioned did he change two or four tires? He changed four tires, but I like his pit selection right at the entrance of pit road. Like Kevin Harvick last year, last week at Las Vegas, get there, get your work done, then all you have to do is maintain pit road speed leaving. And you see who his neighbor is, don't you? Kevin Harvick. <laughs> So they liked it too, Larry. Casey Mears, sixth place and coming. One and a half seconds off the lead, just ahead of Kurt Busch, Jimmy Johnson, and Jamie McMurray as he battles uh, Jeremy Mayfield for fifth as you watch from Mayfield's back bumper. You just listen to the audio from Jerry Mayfield's car right there. I mean, they're just out of the throttle about a half of a second. Yeah, on these new tires, you're going to be perfect. That's about it. That's some pretty close to racing right there, boys. <laughs> Long way to go to be beating and banging like this. Nice and smooth. Coming back outside. Clear. Go get them. Nice and smooth. Hit your marks now. Cheerly. No substitute for it. Pumping that driver up. you got to encourage the driver. Gordon doesn't want to wait to get the free pass. He was all over Tony Stewart these last couple of laps. Guys, one of the things I'm noticing right now, leader Tony Stewart, for example, as well as guys like Greg Biffle and Dale Earnhardt Jr. have just run the fastest laps of the, of the race right after this last pit stop. So these guys are making adjustments to the race cars and making them faster as we go along. 
I think also the racetrack is cooling down just a little bit. It's getting overcast. The track's going to have more grip with those fresh tires. I think that's another reason we're probably going to see even quicker and faster speeds later on in the race. May see a caution as, uh, nope, looks like Kevin LePage is going to make it all yeah. the way around. He's down on the apron. Brendan, Brendan got the wall real hard off turn four then. 77 car. It was real crowded back in there and uh, I don't know if he got shoved up there or not, but he gets that bad boy a little sideways right there. Whoa! And there's uh, our point leader. In the grass with two wheels. Uh, you know, just making it interesting. <laughs> you know, St. Patrick's Day is this week. <laughs> Must just, be a shamrock or two riding with Matt Kenseth today. Uh, just making it interesting for the old boy. Looks good. Everything looks good. I checked it up to by. Kevin LePage has gone to the garage. He will join Rusty Wallace, whose car is under repair, and retirees Belmont, Shelmerdine, uh, Todd Bodine, Andy Hillenberg, Joe Rutman. Steve? Well, Mike, Jeff Hammond just mentioned that Greg Biffle ran his fastest lap of the day. Now, here's the interesting thing. They didn't make any changes to that 16 of Biffle. They are looking at the cloud cover coming in, and they think that that's going to help their car run even better. Steve, the work in progress continues for Dale Earnhardt Jr. and the Bud guys. He said the car before that last stop was good in one and two. It was even better in three and four, but the problem, he just didn't have enough grip. He said the car is just not grippy enough. A slight wedge adjustment on the last stop. Two laps ago, he keyed the mic and said, yep, that's it. I've got it now. Wow, look at that front bumper action, Daryl. Ryan Newman looked like he got a little impatient with Robbie Gordon. Most people do. <laughs> Look at Greg Biffle in the 16 car now. Remember, this is a battle for second. He's been running right on the low side, right there against that white line. But look right there behind him, Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's back in this race in that eight car. But guys, we talk about the track changing. We are almost two hours into this race. It, the temperature of the track has dropped almost 10 degrees. That's going to change the handling of these race cars. For the better. I yes, mean, it will. It's going it's to pick up grip. So uh, it's going to be uh, I talked to my wife earlier, Stevie, and she said it was raining in Nashville a little while ago, so uh, it's coming this way. Just remember, when we started this race, it was 96 degrees. That makes a huge difference, 10 degrees in track temperature, faster speeds, plus it tightens the car up. It gives them more grip to the racetrack. Robbie Gordon, after trying to get to Tony Stewart, then tried to hold off Greg Biffle, and now he's moved to the high side, and Biffle gets by, but... As Boy, they say, watch this. I, I've seen that before over here. Remember, remember down here last uh, year, Junior spun Tony uh, Brian off the corner there last year, right? That very same way. That's that, that's that line. That's that crack in the track I'm talking about. Watch that 12 car come up the hill now. And here he comes, and he gets a little bit loose right there. Junior gives him a little nerf. Boy, Junior had a run on him, and when he had to get out of the throttle, there goes Casey Mears, who had a full load of momentum coming through. Took full advantage of the situation. But the amazing thing about Dale Earnhardt Jr., about 40 laps ago, before that first caution, he was almost about to go a lap down to the leader. We talked at the top of the show about hits and misses. Maybe they were the wrong kind of hits and misses. We've had a lot of close calls today. 165 laps complete in the Golden Corral 500, presented on Fox by Gillette Bach 3 Turbo. Mach 3 Turbo Champion invites you to enter the Gillette Young Guns Challenge. Each week, a lucky fan will win $5,000. Go to GilletteYoungGuns.com for details. Tony Stewart, our leader at 171 laps, but there's a big bullseye closing in his mirror. I know a young gun that's about to lead this race, and it's Casey Mears in that 41 car. His car works good on the bottom. It works good up top. He pretty much can run that car anywhere he wants to. The biggest thing this kid has going for him right now, confidence. Well, he's got that, and he's using it. Got a fast car, too. Look at him right around. He's, at the, he's in the Tony Stewart lane right there, right around the bottom of the racetrack. And look at him side by side. Casey Mears wants to lead this race. And back in fourth place, Dale Jr., Ryan Newman. Go at it. Casey Mears, did, lead. Casey Mears did lead that lap at the start-finish line. Look at these guys. I mean, this is 175 laps into this race, and look at Greg Biffle in the 16 right there watching all this. Now, when Biffle went up and led a lap, Stewart went right back by him. He's not having such an easy time with Mears. 
You never know about Tony what he's thinking. He might be just checking these kids out, saying, you know, where are you? What do you got, kid? But just look right there. All three makes represented. One, two, three. Dodge, Chevrolet, and Ford. Greg Biffle trying to figure out which one of these guys will prevail. Yeah, and while they're doing that, Dale Jr. is closing up at a high rate of speed. And Ryan Newman in the 12's not far behind him. Well, Junior just got by him, and now Junior's going to be right up in the middle of this whole little deal right here. Let's take parity a step further. As Biffle almost brushed the wall there. Of the lead lap cars, five are Dodges, four are Chevys, four are Fords. Don't get much better than that. But you know Biffle, he's going to wear that right rear quarter panel out. He, he's done it ever since I with trucks, bush cars, cup. Junior has a look under Biffle. Having a look and having the spot being two different things, Darrell. Yeah, he had to get up out of the trial, and here comes Ryan Newman right back underneath him going down into turn one. So he's going to have to regroup. Talk about comers and gores. The car right behind these guys, the six car, Mark Martin, his car was not that good in the early going, got a lap down, but he's right up there in position to get the pardon or the free pass should we get a caution. He's been running with these leaders now for 25 laps. Let's talk about misses. That missed lug nut on Casey Kane, where he had to make an extra pit stop with 14 cars in the lead lap. Kane has gained only one position since the restart. He is 13th as Casey Mears goes back to the lead. Look at Greg Biffle. He's right there he's down to the bottom. Look at the different lines with these guys. I think Tony let that, uh, I think he wanted to get that 41 car out from behind him. Dick Bergren. Jimmy Ellis is Casey Mears, crew chief. We heard earlier on the radio that he was struggling with his shoulder that was going to sleep. How's he doing out there? Looks like he don't hurt too bad. He's doing really well, though. Really proud of him, man. It's pretty cool to see him lead this race. And, you know, really neat deal. Doing a great job. Tonight. And Tony Uri Jr., the car chief, who's pointed his driver past Tony Stewart coming down the front stretch. Tony, that test really paid off, didn't it? Yeah. You know, we had a real bad week last week, but the guys kept their chin up. We went to Bristol Wednesday and uh, Kentucky Thursday. Just learned a lot about this new tire, and uh, obviously it's paying off today. Uh, kind of struggled early in the week when we applied them things that we learned, so uh, it's just been a real good day so far. And you should hear his Dale Jr. on the radio. He is ecstatic. At one point, he yelled, whoa, look at me. <laughs> Maybe it was just that yeah. when he and Tony got tired. I think if you want to look at why he was hollering, at the, whoa, look at me, watch this, right. watch this shot. He and Tony come down through here, and they exchange greetings. This is coming off turn four onto the front straightaway. Ryan Newman in the 12 on the bottom. I'm going to tell you what, Tony Stewart in the 20 beats that left front fender up. He's going to be dog meat. Yeah, he is, and I think it, uh, he wasn't happy about Junior trying to slide up in front of him. Well, now that they've gotten past Tony, Casey Mears and Greg Biffle are going to battle for the lead. But, you know, I thought Tony kind of let Mears go by, but it looks like Tony's got a little bit of a problem. He's kind of <laughs> drifting You're back. Fine. Don't worry about nothing behind you. Look at Biffle off that last corner, Daryl. That car of Greg Biffle's got really loose. He likes it that way. I tell you, he'll, he'll wear that right rear out on that thing, rubbing it up against the wall. Yeah, I mean, he runs every lap like it's the last lap. We need to also document Rusty Wallace is back out on the racetrack with a new transmission, 33 laps down to the leader. Well, if Biffle likes the rear end hung out like that, he's going to love Darlington next Sunday. <laughs> yep. It's going to be interesting to see how the safer barriers down there affect the racing because uh, they've taken away 26 inches of groove of racetrack. You know, I read some quotes from Casey Mears, the 41 car this week, and people were asking him all winter long, is your job in jeopardy? And he said, you know what? Chip Ganassi made a promise to me he would stick with me no matter what through two years. I think Chip Ganassi made a good move by sticking with him. Well, and that's the best confidence builder you can get. Never mind what you read and never mind all the rumors and the whispers in the garage. You go right to your car owner, and when he gives you the vote of confidence, that means a lot. It's all about performance. You perform, your owner will be very proud and happy of you. It's a pretty simple formula, right? Casey Mears leads Greg Biffle and Ryan Newman in Atlanta.
The Golden Corral 500 on Fox is presented by Gillette Mach 3 Turbo Champion, the only razor used by the Gillette Young Gun. And brought to you by New Levitra. New choice here now. Ask your doctor today. By Diet Pepsi. It's the Diet Cola. And by the new Chevrolets. Ten new cars and trucks in 20 months. An American Revolution. Welcome back into the Golden Corral 500, presented by Gillette's Mach 3 Turbo and Casey Mears, who just celebrated his 26th birthday on the Friday, moving all the way up to the uh, top, and of course, uh, Casey, the nephew of four-time Indy 500 winner, Rick Mears. That's correct, right there, and a couple other guys right there, Dave Blaney, guy who's run well here before, up in ninth, and we look at the leader right there, Casey Mears, right there, running a high group, Chris. Dale Earnhardt Jr. currently running fourth, and I know you spent some time with them this week, uh, talking about how this was a, a telltale race for them given their points championship run and then the problems they had in Las Vegas. Well, I think definitely they were embarrassed by what their performance in Las Vegas. They went and they said they tested in Kentucky to try to figure out what was going on. Dale Jr. came to the crew chief and told him, he said, man, I've got to figure this tire out. That was the reason for going to Kentucky before they even went to Bristol. Bristol was already scheduled. They felt like they learned a lot. Talked to Tony Urey Sr. this morning. And they're not going to quit until they figure this deal out because they want to win this championship, which is a mark of a good team. Casey Kane currently running 14th and of course uh, Matt Kenseth 12th. We'll keep an eye on that. Let's go back upstairs rejoin Mike, Larry, and Darrell. Derek Cope slow on the apron makes it to pit road. Kevin LePage has made repairs and rejoins the race at 191 laps. Let's go back and have another look at, uh, at that bump and some of the conversation that ensued. And this is Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 8 car with Ryan Newman in the 12 on the bottom coming off turn 4. It's got to hurt that left front fender, and Tony's been falling back ever since. Now we listened in on Dale Jr.'s reaction over the two-way radio. What was that? Had a flat tire. Tell me what happened there. I was saying three wide, and he just come down, and he was on your quarter panel pushing you. 20 was on your right rear quarter panel. Low one. And see, when he said what was that, he thought he had a flat tire. He didn't know Tony was there making the car move around. Peripheral vision is very hard to have with the Hans device and the way they fix the seats now. And I still question there, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and his new spotter for this year, Stevie Reed, still going through a little bit of a learning process because of Ty Norris being there for so many races for Dale Earnhardt Jr. And we just heard Tony Stewart radio into his group chief, Greg Zipadelli. He says, now I am adjust the race car they need to fix the left front fender that's the reason the car is tight not turning yeah i think so that and it keeps getting cooler and cooler and that's going to tighten that car up and uh, he's going to have to search around possibly find him a line to run ninth place dave blaney our dark horse pick for the day in that bill davis dodge jeff gordon's car which wasn't running that well at the start of this run, now seems to be coming back. And you just talk about the open wheel stars of the past that are running good here. Dave Blaney fits right in that category. He's always ran well here. Remember, this is just their second Nextel Cup start of 2004. No sponsor on that race car, and he's driving the wheels off that thing. The way he's running, they should have one. Casey Mears leads Greg Biffle by 1.2 second. Let's go to Mears' pit. Here's Dick. And a lot of that success is due to his spotter, Chris Morris, who has been on the radio with Chris Mears, Casey Mears, ever since Biffle got near his back bumper. Spotter Morris said, concentrate on your line. Don't worry about anything behind you. He took a pause and he said, it's all in front. A couple of laps later, when Mears had opened up some distance, he said, great lap. Just concentrate on your line. You're pulling away. Keep it up. So spotter Chris Morris is helping Casey Mears, the leader, by what he has to do and Mike that's to look through the windshield and not in the rearview mirror good advice Dick right side of your screen seventh place battle Jimmy Johnson Tony Stewart go at it huge crowd here in Atlanta I think the biggest March race crowd I've ever seen Governor Sonny Perdue among them interested spectator hosted a lot of the NASCAR folks at the state capitol on Thursday I don't think they did any uh, laps around the dome but I know there are a few that wanted to a pretty nice reception from uh, the state of Georgia as we come to Atlanta here Steve Burns with Greg Biffle's crew chief Doug Richard Doug I just heard you say you're going to stop at about 15 laps what will you adjust to that race car that's 16. Well I'm not sure what I'd change on the car seems like when the sun's out I'm a little looser and as soon as I get cloud cover I'm a little bit tight so you know I, I guess I'll have to look at the sky and see what we're going to change next but you know today the National Guard subway
having to come down pit road for a second time to hit those lugs. Casey Kane restarted 12. He has since dropped back to 14th. The problem, no adjustments on that last stop. He felt like he had the car in the area that it needed to be. Now it's skatey. Way too loose. He says he can't even hardly turn the wheel. Just cannot wait till he hits pit road for that next stop to tighten it up. Thanks, Matt. Let's have a look at what just happened over at DW's hot spot, turn two. And this is a classic example of what I was talking about, one high, one low. See the kind of that, it's not a big deal, but it's a crack in the track right there, and he pushes right up into the car on the outside. Fortunately, these two cats were able to hang on and save it. And Daryl, it looked like Jeff Burton in the 99 was on the verge of being very loose to begin with, and he just made him loose. Man, this cat here is checked out. <laughs> Casey Mears at 199 laps, 1.1 seconds up on Ryan Newman in the Golden Corral 500. The Golden Corral 500 on Fox, presented by Gillette Mach 3 Turbo, is brought to you by Visa, proud sponsor of NASCAR. Play Race the Pros online video game at foxsports.com. Keyword games, bring your helmet. 205 laps, and Casey Mears trying to wear out the field, but Ryan Newman has reeled him in. The big question has been, after qualifying day, can Ryan Newman seal the deal? He won eight races last year, but just hadn't quite sealed the deal this year after sitting on the pole at Rockingham and after sitting on the pole here, but right now with about 120 laps to go. I think the racetrack has come to that race car, Darrell. I think the cooler condition suits it more. I think you're right, because uh, he known to run the baby hung out just a little bit a little loose so maybe the track tightened up a little bit and fixed his car for him you know we talk about comers and goers i want to talk about teammates the car that's up there in the fourth position right now jeremy mayfield had a respectable run but that pit stop about 50 something laps ago they catapulted him up in the top five and he's hanging there working on greg biffle the 16 car but on the other end of the spectrum the goers all because of a mistake on pit road casey kane has only made his way back to third 13th position. He just actually moved into 11th, but he's over a half a lap behind our leader, Casey Mears, right now. Just hadn't been able to make that distance back up. Jeremy Mayfield went into the pits 10th, came out 6th, and moved up to 5th when Kane had to make that second stop. And now here he is after Greg Biffle for 3rd. Driving off into turn one this late into a run at 190 miles per hour on old tires. And Darrell, it sounded like Mayfield had to get out of it to keep from washing up into Biffle. Yeah, that's what happens to you. You get alongside somebody, and particularly, I think, with a smaller rear blade, you know, that have a tendency to suck you right around. These two guys are... All these guys here are really working on each other for position. That's for the lead. And yeah, it's all our top four cars right here. Battle for the lead, battle for third. And then Jeremy Mayfield running the bottom of the racetrack where Greg Biffle was running it earlier. Now Greg Biffle in the 16th moved to the top. We'll see if they flip-flop as they get down to turn three and four. We get such a great run when you come off high over there, but obviously the shorter distance is around the bottom if you can get back to the throttle. And as they get side by side, they're going to have company. Junior, right with him. Whoa, Biffle almost got the fence. For about how many times? <laughs> <laughs> and not far behind this group while they're doing all this, Jamie McMurray in that 42 car, the same car. He rented every downforce track. He's back there lurking in six. I'm not laughing at Biffle. I'm laughing at how often he can do that and get our attention, and it's it's almost become commonplace. No, it is. I'm telling you, every race I watch the guy drive in the bush, cup, I don't care what it is, he does that. Look right here as our leaders get into traffic. Terry Labonte in the five car. He is a lap car. Ryan Newman wants to take advantage, wants to use Terry Labonte as a pit. Pit stops. Mayfield is in, and so is Biffle. These are scheduled green flag stops. Sterling Marlin's been in. I kind of like coming in right now, Larry. I like coming in and getting my tires on there and uh, maybe making up a little bit of time. Well, I think that's what Greg Biffle and that group, Doug Richard, has done all day long. They've kind of short-pitted, not a lot, but I think that's played to their role, Steve Burns. Hey, Larry Mack, he had a clear shot in. His teammate Kurt Busch will come in just a little bit later. No adjustments to that 16 car. Biffle saying it gets better in the longer run. Just more tires and gas. Mack.
cause for wedge adjustment as George does make the wedge adjustment. They come around to the left side. Joe Piet going to work on the left rear. And Terry on the front to Steve Burns. Well, Matt, we said Tony Stewart lost the handle on that car during that last run. They just made a wedge adjustment. Tony said, how did the car get that bad? His crew chief, Greg Zipadilli, said we took a half a pound in the right rear. Tony said, take it back out. Dick. Jeff Gordon has just left pit road. He did hit the wall a few laps later and has basically said all day that he does not like the car. It's awful for him. Casey Mears is going to be coming down pit road very shortly. Jamie McMurray in and so uh, coming out of the pits is Kurt Busch. Jeannie? Well, the 48 of Jimmy Johnson saying he's free in but more free off than he has been. So they're talking about air pressure adjustments to that right rear and fuel. Leaders in, Dick. Casey Mears in. He is having the best in front of his entire race career today a legitimate shot to win it the crew knows it's up to them right now no mistakes and they're having a tough time on the left side jack doesn't pick the car up oh what a slow pit stop the jack just didn't get it up dale Earnhardt jr the eight car he is the leader he will get his five bonus points and he's going to run another lap or two matt yo casey kane comes to a stop look for an air pressure adjustment remember we told you earlier that casey's dodge Joe Nemechek, Dave Blaney, Jeff Green, all on pit road, Johnny Sauter. Here comes Dale Earnhardt Jr. in eight car, the Budweiser car for his green flag stop. These are all scheduled green flag stops, four, four tires. Al Petty coming in with him, Brendan gone. Also on pit road, and this is the third time today that we have cycled through green flag pit stops. Junior's in. Matt? Junior pitch lap 216. He said the car was a little bit tight, but not bad. They're going to try to adjust the race car with air pressure. As Phil drives, the heat hits those lugs in the left front. A little bit of trouble in the left rear. 15 flat. Things should cycle through with Ryan Newman as the leader. And Jeremy Mayfield, though, is going to come out second. Greg Biffle, Casey Mears. With the slowness on that stop, will slip to fourth. Jamie McMurray, Jimmy Johnson, Dale Jarrett, Tony Stewart, and Matt Kenseth at 216 laps. The Golden Corral 500 on Fox, presented by Gillette Mach 3 Turbo, is brought to you by Aaron's Sales and Lease Ownership. Let Aaron's drive your dreams home today. By Quaker State, the power to reduce friction. And by the new Chevrolets, 10 new cars and trucks in 20 months, an American revolution. At 222 laps, here are the Chevy Point leaders, where those drivers would leave today in the points if they retain their current positions on the racetrack. Stewart, Earnhardt Jr., and Gordon. And I would say after Las Vegas, if Dale Earnhardt Jr. and that eight group can come out here third in points, that they will feel awfully good about it. They'd be pretty happy. We've only had two cautions today. They've both been brief ones for debris, but we've had three green flag pit stops. So with those long green runs, right now 14 cars on the lead lap, led by Ryan Newman and Jeremy Mayfield, who's two seconds back of the pole sitter. Casey Mears... After that pit stop miscue, now has climbed his way back up to fourth. But here's what's happened. Watch the jack man come around to the left side. Makes a slight trip there. The tire changer is watching and waiting for the car to get up in the air. And they complete the stop. Yeah, the tire changer's kind of sprawled out there. See how far back his kind of feet are sticking? And the jack man tripped over one of them. But then, Darrell, young driver trying to make up time. Is it true you can't make up time? You can only lose time? <laughs> when you do that, it is, buddy. When you scrape it off the wall, I mean, you get, you get away with that if you do it slightly and lightly and politely. But you can't do it all nightly. 
But I tell you what, a group that just continues to make up ground for their driver on pit road. Remember, this is green flag stops. Look at Jeremy Mayfield's group, the 19 group. They go from fourth to second. And then the real loser, of course, is Casey Mears going from first to fourth. And I think we pretty much documented why. Now, these guys are to the point where they possibly only have one more pit stop, one more green flag stop. This is where you get good information for your driver. You pat all those crew members on the back and say, one more time, five off, five on, got to make it right. Two hundred thirty two laps complete in the Golden Corral 500 presented on Fox by Gillette Mach 3 Turbo. And the uh, parity page has taken a tilt. Four Dodges in the top five in the second five, three Chevys and two Fords. As Ryan Newman and Jeremy Mayfield continue to lead this field and the biggest surprise of the day right in front of our leader. Bobby Labonte, six-time Atlanta winner, two laps down and about to go three. Who'd have thought that that car would be that far off here? You could have got my money. But I'm going to tell you something, guys. You know, the Dodges have done something. Over the winter, I don't know what they changed. I mean, we do know that they've got a different tail. And I don't know what they did under the hood. But they have stepped their program up big time. I even saw it yesterday in the truck race. Bobby Hamilton yesterday, he could, he could pass at will. He had a fast hot rod and it looked like most of it was under the hood of course bobby's a great driver as well let me double check that labonte is one lap down about to go two laps down there's a dodge just keeps getting better and better all day long in that 19 car jeremy mayfield once again i think a big tribute to kenny francis and that pit crew but his, it's like the racetrack just continues to come to this car as well just gets keep, keep getting better Looks pretty comfortable in there. He's not uh, he's looking around a little bit, and he's not holding. When you're not gripping the steering wheel, he's just kind of got his hands laying there. That means that car is driving pretty darn good. Nice and smooth. Behind him, Biffle, Mears, McMurray, and then Junior, who apparently. You've heard all weekend long about what they did this week to overcome the troubles in Las Vegas. And Junior could leave here third in points, which after last weekend wouldn't be too bad. He'd trail Kenseth and Stewart by 112. That's not bad considering what's happened over the last 10 days. And you got to remember something, folks. We got a, basically a 26 race season. You're going to run 26 races, then you're going to clean the slate. To throw a caution flag. Yeah, so it doesn't, up. doesn't matter how far ahead Matt Kenseth might be, as long as you're in the top 10, you got a shot. And with only 26 races, the number of mulligans you have is not very many. Dale Earnhardt Jr. probably used his only one he can use. Now, Kenseth is and you you've read this page before quietly climbing his way back up through the field he got himself back on the lead lap after spinning entering the pits and now he is up to eighth place but dick bourbon the problem is he's 20 seconds behind the leader he's one of the cars that has to have a caution to get caught up yeah but not to worry about that chance that that board is hot and it's been fast all day and hear this henry ford ran one race in his entire life it happened in 1901 and henry won the race a thousand dollars went to him, but more importantly, the intention of investors who sent money his way. Between the prize money and the investors, he got enough money from winning that race to start the Ford Motor Company. For over a hundred years, Ford's been racing ever since. And Ford's had a great 2004, winning the pole for the Daytona 500 and two of the first three races. If you haven't looked at a Ford lately, look again. Looked at the back of that Ford a lot this year. <laughs> They've seen the word Lexan a uh, number of laps, especially at Rockingham and last week at, at Las Vegas. Yeah, and of course, we're still got a good ways to go here. Another green flag stop, so uh, this thing is far from over. Meanwhile, Casey Kane has picked up one spot uh, moving past Dale Jarrett. And on this, this lap. Mike, this happened to him last week, if you recall. Middle of the race, the, the three-quarters of the way through the race, kind of fell back mid-pack. Had a problem in the pits last week. Kind of fell back mid-pack. But when the caution came and they were able to get him back up front, he was right there trying to win the race. You spent some time with him this weekend. What kind of sense do you get of, of Casey Kane? Just a, I don't know, don't worry, I can tell you, he's a pleasant young man to be around. He's got a great attitude. I asked him, I said, were you nervous when you stepped into this car knowing 
as Bill Elliott's car, like at Daytona, and you're surrounded by all these superstars, were you afraid you were going to mess up? He said, no, not really. He said, I was felt very comfortable. Once I get in the car, I feel like that's where I belong. And Mike, I've been watching his lap times. He's as quick as any car out there. He's about two or three tenths quicker than Ryan Newman. Once again, the problem a lot like Matt Kenseth. He's 23 seconds behind the leader. He needs that caution like he got last week in Las Vegas. Now, here's, here's a funny story. I asked him, I said, now, you're coming off a of turn four into Rockingham there. You're racing the champ for the win. I said, you ever think about nerfing him? And he said, oh, no, I wouldn't do that. Casey Mears is sitting down the table a little ways. Casey said, I would have. <laughs> <laughs> The last two cars on the lead lap is Ryan Newman has now gotten past Bobby Labonte and put Labonte now two laps down. Last two cars on the lead lap, 13th and 14th, Kurt Busch, the 97th, and Jeff Gordon. 24. And I think this is part of our comers and our goers because these two cars, Kurt Busch in the 97, Jeff Ford in the 24, they look like they had cars that could contend for the win early in the race. Yeah, there's a couple of Tony Stewart and Jeff Gordon both have just kind of found their way back through the field. For whatever reasons, pit stops, bad adjustments, weather, something has affected those race cars. Now, ahead of these two, Dave Blaney is 12th, Dale Jarrett is 11th. Uh, let's get an update from Jeannie. And crew chief Mike Ford telling his driver, Dale Jarrett, look, one more stop, and it'll be a welcome one for the 88 car. Just starting to get loose, but it's kind of been his problem all day. It's just starting since this recent pit stop. Before he came in, he said the car had a really bad feel. But it is feeling better, but of course it is all relative. It is still loose all the way through. Thanks, Jeannie. Kurt Busch, uh, kind of like his teammate Greg Biffle, found his way to the edge of the racetrack, exiting four. That was a little harder lick than we've seen some of those other cars like Casey Mears and even Greg Biffle hit that wall. When you see them rock, that means the tires are trying to go up the wall. They, would, they bounce off the wall. Casey Mears, Jamie McMurray, two Dodges fighting for fourth. Well, Ryan Newman puts a lap on Robbie Gordon, 245 completed Atlanta. The Golden Corral 500 on Fox is presented by Gillette Mach 3 Turbo Champion, the only razor used by the Gillette Young Guns. Caution is out for the third time today. Jamie McMurray had his foot to the floor and the engine grenaded. He is coasted to the garage. Cleanup crew is out on the track and the leaders come to pit road led by Newman and Mayfield. Dick. Jeremy Mayfield says that he's going to take four tires. The car feels pretty good. It's a little pushy when he's on the gas coming out of the corner. So far, so good on this pit stop. No mistakes at all. A terrific run for Mayfield. He started in 16th position and pitted out of pitted in second spot. Steve Burns. Greg Biffle on pit road. They're going to take one pound out of the right front inner liner on that 16 of Greg Biffle. He has a clear shot out. Matt. Leader Ryan Newman working on his first top five finish since Rockingham last November. Slight air pressure adjustment, slight wedge adjustment. It's going to be close whether he beats the 19 up. The car needed to be a little more free. I tell you, that 19 car, that pit Larry is working for him. He was out of his pit box before other people even got in. I mean, your pit selection is by how you qualify. I got to believe people are going to start looking hard at these pits. They're down near the entrance of pit road. It's a great place to be on the caution, particularly. And Steve, what do you think? Uh, DW, I'm listening to Doug Richard and Greg Biffle talk right now. There was trouble on the left front tire. They didn't have the tire on, and the hub was spinning. They wanted Greg to keep his foot on the brake. Guys, I'm going to tell you who this caution was a huge benefit for. Casey Kane in that nine car and people like uh, Matt Kenseth in the 17 who needed to make some ground up. Also a huge break for Jeff Gordon and Kurt Busch who was just about to go a lap down. Here's what happened to put us under the third caution of the day at lap 246. Watch the 42 of Jamie McMurray. Just had passed his teammate uh, for about the fourth or fifth position. 
But Daryl, this is in that la getting close to that last hundred miles. We talk right. about 500 mile races. Jeff Hammond, this is where the engine tuners get very, very nervous about parts and pieces in that engine. And you know why, Larry? Because of the fact these valve springs right now have been cycling all this time. We talked about earlier how much faster the cars are running because of the cooler weather. Well, you take a look at our Ford Cutaway engine. You can imagine this right here is a valve spring going up and down. Here's this piston. You can imagine this speed compared to 9,000 RPM and what is going on inside this engine. Some of these parts are starting to fatigue. Valve springs are breaking, possibly a rocker arm, piston failures, any number of things in the last 100 miles can get you here at Atlanta because you carry so much of a consistency of high RPMs around this entire racetrack. Remember last hit time we raced here, Jimmy Johnson, 20 laps to go, had a strong car, broke. So you gotta be careful to make, make the end of this race, guys. Thanks, Jeff. Jeff Gordon has come back in for a second time. Yeah, they're checking the toe, and uh, apparently he's scraped the wall or gotten into someone uh, and thinks he knocked the toe out, and the car's not driving to suit him, so they were checking it. Now, Ward Burton would get the free pass. However, Ward pitted with the lead lap cars, not the lap down cars. We'll see how that turns out. The Golden Corral 500 on Fox, presented by Gillette Mach 3 Turbo, is brought to you by Radio Shack. Hey, race into your neighborhood, Radio Shack now, and enter the Call Your Driver sweepstakes. You could win a dream trip to the Samsung Radio Shack 500, even a new car. Enter today at Radio Shack. Lap 253, let's bring you up to date with what's happened this afternoon here at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. Jeff Gordon passing for the lead here as Ryan Newman got off to the quick start. Gordon led for 38 laps. Tony Stewart passed him. Stewart led for more than 100 laps. Matt Kenseth, points leader, has problems trying to pit Jeff Hammond. Trying to make a green flag stop. Coming a little bit hot. Rear brakes locked up on it. Round he went. Cost him a lap early on. The violation of the commitment line, the official rule. Meanwhile, good racing buddies. Tony Stewart and Dale Earnhardt Jr. bump. No harm, no foul. And Casey Mears and his Dodge, the 41 car, passing Stewart for the lead. But then Mears having problems in the pits, his crew, Second, so they lose the lead. Ryan Newman took over. Then Jeremy Mayfield taking the lead. And we're back racing under green with Mayfield leading Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Ryan Newman. And you're up to date. Let's head back upstairs rejoin Larry, Daryl, and Mike. Thanks, Chris. Jeremy Mayfield is the leader. Three Dodges in the front four. He leads Earnhardt Jr., Newman, and Mears. The free pass car was Ward Burton. He pitted too soon. NASCAR had him come back in and pit again under that caution. So he did restart at the tail end of the longest line. He is 14th, the last car on the lead lap. It's Mayfield, Jr., Newman, Mears, and Jimmy Johnson in fifth inside of Casey Mears. Hey, that's another car that has really done a good job. Chad Canals in that group, the 48 car of Jimmy Johnson. They've kept up with the racetrack. They've been back there from about about fifth to twelfth all day long. And I think you see that little orange tape on the nose there. They put a little tape on the grill as the temperatures went down. They were able to do that. That gives a little bit more downforce. And uh, he looks pretty racy right now at uh, coming here with less than uh, 70 laps to go. We should also give Chad Canal some credit for his management on pit road as well. He's played the part of traffic reporter of the pits. Overcautious and can you blame him after last week's collision with Kevin LePage? picture and the 41 of Casey Mears. Now, Larry, they stop with about 75 laps to go. Will that be their last stop today? I was going to say, the plot has thickened here. It was going to, without that caution, it was going to even out to where everybody could do it on one more stop. They can only run about 55 to 60 laps on fuel. Everyone's going to be short, so the question will be fuel, right side really, tires, really don't late. forget, those left side tires have been working mighty hard, too. Matt Yoakum, what are they saying in Delaware? smoke for some reason other than that i like the way it's handling the other bad news he is 10 laps shy on fuel but i think every
everyone is. I don't think anyone, Daryl has taught me, never say never, but basically on walking through the garage this morning, no one can come close to running 77 laps on fuel. I, I might even agree with you on that one, Larry. I figured. <laughs> but, but, you don't have to get the calculator out. There's going to be one more cost. It, it, it's standing by, though. I have to work on it. I'll let you know. Junior giving a little wave to Robbie Gordon. Thank you for letting me go. Gordon is not on the lead lap. Junior is. That's a nice five-digit wave. Tony Stewart coming back. That's in Casey Mears for seventh place. Steve Burns on Stewart. Hey, Mike, four laps before the concert came out, Tony Stewart told his team this thing is plowing so badly we're going to knock the fence down. He said it's like a skateboard on turn two. When he came to pit road, what they worked on was pulling out a fender that was banged in. And that would be the fender that got banged in, the left front fender here with Dale Earnhardt Jr. on the front stretch. And like Daryl pointed out, I think two things is went against them. That left front fender plus the racetrack cooling down, changing the handling condition. It's just hard to believe you can there and lead the race like that and, and, and have a minor little incident with someone, but now you can't drive it. That's how sensitive these things are. Yeah, it speeds at 180, 190 miles per hour. That front end is very, very sensitive, especially those front fenders. Jeremy Mayfield out front, his last victory, Pocono in 2000, when he passed Dale Earnhardt on the last lap. And you know, his his uh, future with this race team, the middle of last year, was very unknown. This team really came to life as we watched the battle right here between Casey Mears and Greg Biffle for eighth. We, that team came to life, all of a sudden, everything's good again. I'll tell you, I think that's the thing that a Casey Kane brings to a race team like Ray Everham youth and excitement it, it filters right through the whole organization and when they started talking about kane was going to come in and drive the nine car ray was a miserable ray was miserable last year up until all of a sudden things clicked and turned and now look at him he's sitting up on that toolbox cheering his team on i tell you who's cheering also is dale Earnhardt jr's fans all of them are standing here as he goes up there to battle jeremy mayfield for the lead of this race yeah it, it, jr's gonna be okay if his car will stay good Seems like he falls off more than some of the other guys does as the run goes along. Friday after qualifying, Junior sounded a little tired and a little frustrated. He mentioned he hadn't been home in two weeks. Appearances, testing, and then the problems at Las Vegas. Then he doesn't sound tired right now as he goes for the lead. No problems right now. Let's see who's going to lead this lap. I believe Jeremy Mayfield will still lead it, but I think if Dale Earnhardt Jr. can get the run down into turn one on the bottom, he should be able to complete the pass off turn two. It'll be close. His car right now on, on fresh tires, Darrell, like you said, gets such a bite when he puts that throttle down off the corner. Dale Earnhardt Jr. guns the Bud Chevy into the lead over Jeremy Mayfield, Ryan Newman, Jimmy Johnson, and Casey Kane. Golden Corral 500 on Fox, presented by Gillette Mach 3 Turbo, is brought to you by Nextel. Coast to coast walkie talkies in under a second. NASCAR and Nextel, partners in speed. By Napa Auto Parts. Napa, get the good stuff. By Papa John's Pizza, better ingredients, better pizza. And by WebMD, redefining modern medicine. 54 laps to go at a, a sea of red as Dale Earnhardt Jr. experiencing a little March Madness leading the race and Jeff Hammond, his fans, up on their feet when he took the lead moments ago. He's back. As you sit there and look at the Budweiser Chevrolet right there leading down in the corner. I mean, when he took that lead, Chris, I'm telling you, everybody came to their feet, and I could not believe the amount of red up there in the grandstand. He has really got a lot of support here today in Atlanta. I know you've been uh, on this most of the day. We've been discussing it, but after the great start and then the disappointment in Las Vegas, this critical for them to bounce back. How have they been able to do it, Dale and Jill Jr. and his team? I think that the best way to sum it up is perseverance. They have really gotten after this problem that they had in Las Vegas. They weren't going to just kind of like say, well, it was a bad day and let it go. They went immediately and started testing, trying to real figure out what was wrong with the race car. And I think they have. This whole team has rallied behind that bad situation right there and they're getting it done. As we got a battle right now with Ryan Newman, third, fourth, and fifth there. I mean, they're really getting after it with Jimmy Johnson. 
and looking, you know, back at fifth and sixth, it, it's not exactly one-two, but Casey Kane slightly ahead of Matt Kenseth, and uh, these two have been uh, paired in the last couple of races, and Casey's been the runner-up in that kick. Yeah, the only thing different right now is Casey Kane's in fifth place, Matt Kenseth is uh, sixth. We'll take a look back from Robbie Gordon's car to uh, Ryan Newman Ryan right Newman. now, who's in third place, so we got a pretty good battle going on here. And, of course, uh, with Dale Earnhardt Jr. leading this race, you know, maybe another rivalry that has been going since the Bush Series when Kenseth and, and uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. were going at each other. Yeah, that's true right there. As you see, our Dale Earnhardt continue to lead right there. But we got really a hot battle going on there between Jimmy Johnson and Ryan Newman. Jimmy Johnson's trying to make his way back up here to the front. They've been doing a really good job all day in the pits with Chad Knauss and his whole team here. Jimmy Johnson gets almost to the inside of the 12 car. As the battle for third. Jeremy Mayfield currently running second behind your leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr. with 50 laps to go. Let's go back up and rejoin Larry, Darrell, and Mike. Fellas, some of the red in that grandstand is Dodge red because Casey Kane is the fastest car on the racetrack. You see, he has caught Ryan Newman and Jimmy Johnson. He's coming back. He is, and uh, the other guy that's not too far behind him is Matt Kenseth. What a recovery for that team to get back on the lead lap, up in sixth place, and if they have a good green flag stop like they're known to do, don't count him out either. And, and I was just going to say, guys, we're, should we not get another caution? We are due for that green flag stop at about 30 laps, and I just believe that's going to dictate the outcome of this race. Who can make no mistakes like the driver making a mistake, Matt Kenseth coming on the pit road? You can't make a mistake like he just made right there, hitting the wall coming off turn two as well. But I think no mistakes on that pit stop, and what you do on that pit stop is going to dictate the outcome of this race. Let's see how much of the wall Casey Kane just got. Oh, that was just a little brush. He dusted it. He's just good to go. He just dusted it a little bit. Took some of that red off. Chevrolet leading Dodge in the next three spots. Dodge has not won in Atlanta since Richard Petty this race in 1977. Right now we have one running second, third, and fourth. They're lurking. Casey Kane trying to pick up where Ryan Newman left off. As far as top five rookie finishes. Speaking of Ryan Newman, that's who he's racing so hard here for third. It's that's a 12 car. The difference in a rookie and a veteran, you know, a veteran would say, okay, I got to slow down and analyze what happened. You know, did I hurt my car? Did I knock the tire? Am I going to have a fender rub and a blah, blah, blah? Young guys, they don't they don't slow down at all. They just keep on going. Oh, I just brushed the wall a little bit. Well, right, Matt? Matt knows anything. DW, you're exactly right. And one trait that Casey King continues to show, when bad things happen, he remains calm. Remember back to Las Vegas, had one bad run. He dropped back, fought his way back up. He has rebounded from that trouble on pit road. He says the car... Jimmy Ellis, his crew chief, Jimmy said that they simply got behind on their pit stops, got behind on their adjustments, and as a result, right now, the car is loose. Darrell, I've long said these young fellows have three things they don't have to worry about that older fellows do. No KMR, no kids, no mortgage, no retirement plan. <laughs> That's all way off in the future for them. Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Dale Earnhardt Jr. up on Jeremy Mayfield by 1.3 seconds. Then Casey Kane, Ryan Newman, Jimmy Johnson. The Golden Corral 500 on Fox presented by Gillette Mach 3 Turbo is brought to you by Sunoco. The new official fuel of NASCAR. Good enough for NASCAR, good enough for your car. seen it before. NASCAR IMAX 3D. The grand premiere one week ago in Los Angeles. And now it has shattered all records for an original IMAX movie in its first week in screens near you. The avid fan's going to get closer than they ever have been. And then the casual fan is one going to get a bit of an education about things and see some stuff that you know, the basics of our sports about. off to Simon Windsor, Neil Goldberg, all the folks involved, because 
I was blown away. You see things like you've never seen them before, and to see them in 3D, they just, it just jumps off the screen at you, and it's uh, 45 heart-pounding minutes. Worth a ticket. Yep, we've got 125 plus thousand people here today that will vouch for that. that it's, uh, this is an exciting sport to watch. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has opened up a 1.9 second lead on Jeremy Mayfield bat with one pit stop to go. And that pit stop could be very crucial for Dale Jr. getting back to victory lane. Walt Smith, you rallied the guys, you gave them a pep talk. What did you tell the butt guys? Basically, I told them that they've had an awesome day in the pits all day, and I don't want them to rest on their laurels. They're going to be remembered by what they do on this last pit stop. We went over all different scenarios. If it's gas only, if it's two tires, if it's four tires. I told them whether it's caution or green flag, I told them what to expect, what each guy had to do, and I said above all to relax and not make any mistakes. Dale Jr. told me in Daytona his goal this year, five wins. He knocked off number one at Daytona. He told me this weekend maybe number two will come here. He's never won here in Cup. In my there for so many years, it was the crew chief that came off the box and gave that pep talk. He's the defensive coordinator talking to his defensive line. The offensive coordinator talking to his offensive line. Knowing Jeff Hammond, if this race can be won or lost on that last pit stop. Most definitely it can. The thing I find more interesting right now is what Walt Smith alluded to. Maybe a gas and go, maybe only two tires, but Larry, this close to the end, gas and go is real proper. Well, and that's the reason that you have the pit crew coach to worry about that pit crew right now, the big decision of what to do. That's what that crew chief has to be thinking about right now. I'd be a little bit concerned, though, with the tire wear. I think that we'd be getting particularly on the right rear. I, I, I have to take at least two tires. I believe I could get two can of fuel and still be okay. And what you have to be careful, Daryl, Atlanta, for whatever reason, it's, it's just atrocious for changing the handling characteristics of the race car, changing just two tires. Yeah, you almost have to make an adjustment with it. He's got these guys. I mean, it's not like you're out there all by yourself and you can kind of do what you want to do. You still got to be smart and make the right call here. About 16 to 20 laps to pit for the leaders. You'll see it come through again on the crawl at the top of your screen. Remember the second green flag pit stop and the difficulty during those stops the leaders had with cars on fresh tires being so much faster than them. I I've got to agree, Daryl. I'd want tires. Yeah, yeah. I, I know I'm going to take two. Uh, I got to take two. I think you can give me two tires. I got to have a can of fuel. I got to at least have one whole can of fuel. So I believe you can give me two tires and a can of fuel. Yeah, well, these guys can change right side tires in about seven seconds. I need you there for about five seconds of fuel. The two tires are almost free. struggling there for a while but they've made the car better and he's back up to uh, seventh place not near as good as he was early on but uh, at least rebounded some but i tell you the car the comers the goers greg biffle there in the 16 car up there leading the race not that many laps ago he's back there in eighth position 13 seconds behind our leader dale Earnhardt jr and larry i mean what about, I was going to say, can you say short pit? Yeah. Well, what about if I'm him now, I'm short pit, and I'm going to take four because I'm going to make up all the time I can before these other cats pit. Yeah, he will be flying on those four fresh tires. I think this is a no-brainer, Steve Burns, four tires. Hey, Larry, we're listening to Doug Richard and driver Greg Biff will talk about it. Richard said, let's gamble, let's gamble, let's pit right now. They also talked about making a wedge adjustment. Right side tires going. He's keeping his foot on that brake pedal so they don't repeat the same problem. Left side tires going on, and they do not make a wedge adjustment. Four tires of gas. Now, Larry Darrell, if he has four tires, does everybody else have to take four tires? Well, it will kind of have the crew chiefs, and everybody's going to figure out where he is in the scheme of things and what is how much time is he making up, then they'll decide. Yeah, right now, our leaders are running in the high. 31 second bracket. What we'll have to do is monitor how fast Greg Biffle is on these four fresh tires. Plus, you got to remember something. He was falling back. He wasn't running near as well as he was earlier. So he needed to come now, get the tires, and hopefully make his car better. If he can't win the race, at least charge back up through there and get a good top five finish. The crew chiefs have access to the same timing and scoring information that we bring to you. So Biffle's times will be a topic of interest in all 
the lead lap pits. Just speaking of red, though, look at the Dodge boys, their teammates, Jeremy Mayfield in the 19, Casey Kane in the 9. You know, I've talked to Ray Everham a lot over the winter, and he's so proud of this organization. This is its fourth year. Every year, this race team, this operation, has won at least one pole and at least has one win. One other lead lap car pitting is Jimmy Johnson. Jeannie? as well. Here comes Matt Kenseth in the 17 car. Remember the mistake by him. He definitely don't come on the pit road too hot this time. No, I think that was just purely and simply the brakes were not warm when he came on pit road. And I have to believe all these cars pitting this early will definitely take advantage of the four fresh tires. Pit stops with 27 laps to go. And at this point, would you need two cans of gas? No, you'll only need one can. Here comes Jeremy Mayfield, our second place car. Dick Bergman, I bet he gets four tires too. Yeah, I bet he will as well because the car is pushing. He used the word plow. That's a word you've heard before, Larry McReynolds. And they had planned to pit exactly at this point, about 15 to go. Crew has done a terrific job all day long. They have been very fast, no mistakes. Another good pit stop for Jeremy Mayfield. Tony Stewart and Dale Jarrett are in. Let's go to Stewart's pit. Mike, a round and a half out of the left rear, a wedge adjustment, and they also take air out of the right rear tire on that number 20 Chevrolet of Tony Stewart. Left side tires coming off and back on. Four tires for Stewart. Four tires also for Dale Jarrett, and here comes Casey Kane. And here comes Casey Mears, here comes Jeff Gordon. Now, Matt Yoakum, we'll talk about Dale Earnhardt Jr. in a second. going to get it looks like uh, four tires I don't, if i was junior i wouldn't stay out there much longer these guys on these fresh tires they're going to be coming in a hurry no he's got to do one thing or the other right now he's got to come get four tires jeff hammond or he may just roll the dice keep running as far as he can and maybe just go for that splash of fuel or two tires but he's going to give up a lot of time here jeff he really is early in the day i was watching tony stewart lead this race he had like a five second lead Casey Kane came down pit road four laps sooner than he did, and by the time you know it, he was right back there even with him. So you kind of look at it like that. He's already on pit road, guys. Casey Mears got four tires. So did Jeff Gordon. Kurt Busch is in. So is Dale Earnhardt Jr. And Dave Blaney on the right of your screen. And what they're telling him, all we need is one can of fuel. That way the fuel man's out of the way by the time the guys come around to the left side. They won't be in his way. I think the tempo has been set here. I think everyone will definitely change four tires because just about all of our leaders have been to pit road now. Now, Ryan Newman in the 12 car, he has assumed the lead. Now, he would be the person, Daryl, that either has to come to pit road now or get those four tires, or is he going to be the one to roll the dice? as they have done many times in the past and stay out there as long as they can. Someone has to do it. And it's probably designated to the 12. And if a caution should come out, Matt Boyle and his crew chief in this group, they would definitely be hero material. Yes, oh sir. boy, they would pin everybody well, but yeah. Dale Jr. a lap down. Not gonna happen as here comes the pole sitter, Ryan Newman, into the pit lane. And it appears that right now, it looks like Jeremy Mayfield in the 19 car, he will have the lead, Matt Yoakum. And Ryan Newman makes his way down for his final stop. No adjustments for Dale Earnhardt Jr., by the way, when he made his stop. A great stop by the 9 and the 8. Let's see if Ryan Newman's guys can pull off a stellar stop as well. They don't need a full load of fuel since they don't have to run as many laps. A good solid stop. have an engine failure. Yeah, Jamie McMurray already out with engine trouble, and now Casey Mears has coasted into the garage and likely out of the top 10 in points. Second place, make that third place battle, Jimmy Johnson, Dale Jr. 
tough sledding down on the inside off coming off these corners beside someone. And this is actually a battle for second, and Casey Kane in the nine, he's right there with him. But Jeremy Mayfield is loving what he's seeing right here because he's stretching that lead out. Larry, what we talked about earlier, Jimmy Johnson right here pitted early along with the 19 car, and that's what happens to Dale Earnhardt for sticking out so long now. These new tires may give him an advantage here later on, but right now he's got to run all these guys down and pass them. Yeah, right now Jeremy Mayfield's running 30, 30s, and 30, 40s. These guys are racing each other in 30, 60s, and 30, 70s with 19 laps to go. Mayfield has a one-second lead on Dale Jr. Will it be enough? 19 laps to go in the Golden Corral 500. What a difference a week makes. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Off turn two, powered past Jeremy Mayfield to take the lead. And when he took the lead, he drove off into the sunset. Right now, Dale Earnhardt Jr., he don't need anything but this race to just continue to get the laps counted. There's a couple of things we got to keep our eye on, though, guys. That nine car is not too far behind uh, the 19, and he is closing in a hurry. Quaker State aerial coverage. Junior, bottom of your screen. Mayfield at the top. There's Jeremy and Casey Kane closing in. Dick Bergeron with Casey Mears. Yeah, he's behind the wall. Engine let go. You guys had a great run last week. Best run of your career today. How has this team come together so well? It's just awesome. You know, Target Chip Ganassi Racing has given me everything we needed to go run good. Unfortunately, we had a motor problem today, but we've been pushing Ernie Elliott Engine, those guys, to, to, you know, to give us what they got, you know, and they've been doing that. And, you know, with, with getting more horsepower and, and, and developing and learning, you're going to have problems, you know, and I just, my hat's off to them because they've really made some good horsepower. You know, we just got to get back at it and try to figure out how to make them live just a little bit longer. I felt it tightening up a little bit early, you know, probably about 40 laps ago, and just trying to baby it a little bit and uh, try to get it home and, and uh, leaving out the pits real hard was just real hard on it. But I'm real proud of my guys. The guys did excellent pit stops today. We got a good race team, and I'm ready to go next weekend. And this fellow showed him a lot today, Mike Joy. He had a great run going. And just like Jeff Hammond pointed out, get to that last 50, 75 miles. And remember, a lot of these guys put 100 miles on their engines yesterday. It starts to show up. And trust me, these guys are still thinking hard about that, these final 10 laps. Race teams are like chains. You stretch them, stretch them, stretch them, see what breaks. When that breaks, you fix it. Then you stretch them some more until you get all the links as strong as they need to be. Well, I know what continues to stretch out. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that eight car, his lead. Right now, he's in a league of his own. He's in the 3090s. The closest thing to him is Jeremy Mayfield in the 19 car in second at a 3120. He's beating these guys three tenths a lap. High marks, though, to the Evernham team because as a team, they have the best performance of the day. Yes, Junior is leading. His teammate, Michael Waltrip, though, uh, is way down the list, 25th. Yeah. Evernham's cars are second and third. The Hendrick cars are fourth. That would be Jimmy Johnson. Tenth, Jeff Gordon. And 20th, Brian Vickers. The Penske cars, Newman's great, Rusty wasn't. Uh, the Roush cars, Biffle and Kensett in the top ten. The Gibbs cars, Stewart and eighth, Bobby Labonte down, way down the chart, and so on. It's really been an up and down day for most of these race teams, except for Ray Evernham. He has them both right there, and they've been there for most of the day. Greg Biffle, Tony Stewart, this is seventh place, about 14 seconds behind the leader. And this is two cars that earlier in the day looked like they were going to be the car to beat all day long. Again, I think the big turning point for Tony Stewart, the 20 car, was when he had got that left front fender beat in by Dale Earnhardt Jr. here on the front stretch. Never could recover from that. Plus, I think the racetrack changed. Uh, the racetrack changed, too, but, you know, I was surprised they didn't react to that quicker because, uh, you know, we saw it from up here. It was it looked pretty serious. It took them a while before they recognized that. Add the eight teams to the to the hits and misses. Dale Jarrett is ninth, while his teammate Elliot Sadler is 30th. He struggled all day long since the drop of the green flag. And I think the biggest thing, Mike, remember we talked about it in the beginning of the day, only three caution periods to make adjustments on your car besides those green flag stops. There have just not been many opportunities to fix a car that's been off. Now Ryan Newman, our pole sitter. As you have a look at Ward Burton, who is going to go a lap down. Ward's had a good day for a fellow who's uh, been fighting the flu. And they had Jason Lettler suited up to qualify that car Friday. But Ward hopped in it and did a good job. 
and uh, he's hung on to the lead lap just about all day. Three cautions. You know, he's never had a chance to rest whatsoever. And, Daryl, can you imagine running this 500-mile race with the flu and only getting three cautions to catch your breath? Yeah, it, it's, it's tough. But you go over to the Infield Care Center this morning and get a couple of quarts of fluids pumped in you. And I'll tell you, Larry, you don't know. You get down in that race car, it's nice and warm and snuggly, and uh, it, it, you, you don't even think about feeling bad. You just drive the wheels off of it. You forget about a lot of things. Yes, sir. You, you just in your own little world. Four to go. Ryan Newman, the pole sitter, had a chance to win it, but did he stay on the racetrack too long in the final run? I think he did. You know, he, he was the last one to take advantage of those four fresh tires, and now he's eight and a half seconds behind our leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's just trying to hang on for a top five finish, which, like Dale Earnhardt Jr., considering his run at Las Vegas, would not be a bad day. Matt Kenseth had a good day. It turned pretty ugly when he spun that car getting onto pit road, but boy, have they rebounded. Yes, they have. Not to the degree I think they would like to, but they have rebounded nicely. For the hole they dug themselves, Darrell, they filled it in nicely. They, that's what they do the best. Uh, they, they continue every time they have a problem, they are able to overcome it and overcome it at the racetrack today. Kenseth is sixth of 12 cars on the lead lap as Dale Jr continues to click off laps right on 31 seconds flat, two to go. Two to go, and he has a pretty clear racetrack in front of him. I think uh, he just needs to make sure he hits his marks and uh, keeps his nose clean here for about a lap and a half. Yeah, he's got her on cruise right now, and a high rate of cruise, I might add. He's opened up three and a half seconds on Jeremy. He hasn't backed off any. He keeps, he keeps on hammering. And you know, guys, last week we stood up here in this booth and we questioned, okay, is, is this now showing inconsistency of championship form. When you come back from a run like last week to possibly win this race as we have one to go, yes, that shows championship contention. Car really, it's, it's awesome right now. That's as, that's as good as it gets. He's and that, right out there rim riding. And that was the key to Matt Kenseth last year. Make the car better as the day goes on so that the car is at its best at the end of the day. Yeah, and, and they've done that today with Junior's car all day long. He's kept improving, and the weather came to him, too, I believe. Dale Earnhardt Jr. wins the Golden Corral 500, climbs to third in the point standings as he notches his 11th career victory and his fifth on a non-restrictor plate racetrack. And Darrell, you mentioned 122,000 people. I think all of us standing up as he came across the, the finish line. Jeremy Mayfield comes home second, Casey Kane third, Jimmy Johnson fourth, and Ryan Newman fifth. Geez, bad week for Casey Kane. He dropped a third. <laughs> That's the kind of bad week I'd like to have. <laughs> They've been racing here since 1960. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has just become the 38th different driver to drive to victory lane in a cup race in Atlanta. Welcome to the Nextel Post Race Show, brought to you by Nextel. NASCAR and Nextel, partners in speed. Chevy congratulates Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car. The Monte Carlo team's big win. No car has dominated cup racing like the defending manufacturer's champion, Chevy, an American revolution. And what a moment for Dale Earnhardt Jr. with Jeff Hammond. Chris Myers were down in victory lane, and it's uh, it's okay at the corral for Dale it, Earnhardt Jr. Definitely, as you talk about a comeback. Now, this right here is what you call bowing your neck and getting a job done right there. You can see him behind us right now. He is really excited, and I mean, this is what it's supposed to be. In victory lane, the foam is flying, the eight car is parked, and uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is up on top, just where he was before Las Vegas, and what a bounce back, what a rebound, the time to pit, the decision to pit, the response from his crew, and Dick Bergeron is there in the celebration. Dick? What a lot of beer down here, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Attaboy, Jr., how is it possible to have had such... <laughs> Such a tough week last week, and it goes so well this week. Man, I don't know. <laughs> Talk about from zero to hero. <laughs> that was awesome, though. Uh, just a great race car at the end when it counted. How about your test this week? Did that help you today? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're going to test it to Texas next week, too. So we're going after it. Man, I'm wore out. That was hard as I ever go. How was your race today? Uh, how's my race? Yeah. It was fun. Uh, the tires, a little, out of, a little out of control, but we held on to it. 
Who is your toughest competition out there? Myself. <laughs> How so? Just trying not to spin out. And he was real loose. Congratulations. Great job. Steve Burns. Well, Jeremy Mayfield, Dale Earnhardt Jr. just said that's the hardest he's ever driven in his life. How about you? Well, it feels like we ran hard today. I know he did, too. And, uh, you know, we just come up a little short. But, oh, no, I'm really proud of my guys, man. Everybody on this uh, Everyman Motorsports uh, dies. Worked hard today, and uh, we're, we've been hard, working hard all year, but just uh, we didn't make any mistakes, and the guys did a great job on pit road. And we just come up a little bit short to him, but it seemed like they got better as they win, and um, we kind of got tighter in the last couple of stops. But all in all, great day for us. First top five of the season. Let's go to Matt. Steve, Casey Kane's first 500-mile race. You nearly pulled off the win. Did the car get too tight at the end, Case? Yeah, we got too tight. We were loose all day long, and, um, you know, good run for, for our Dodge dealers team. Jeremy runs second, and, uh, you know, Dale Jr. won. So it was a good, it was a good race. It was a long race, and... Uh, we just got a little too tight there at the end, but, um, you know, definitely a good day for Ray Avenue. What a great three-race run here. A second, second, and a third for Casey Kane. Jeannie? Well, Jimmy Johnson, this is more like it. Surrounded by media, excuse me, ladies. Uh, textbook day for you, really. Just adjusting the car all day and then hitting the end. You guys hit your stride. Did you have a car to win it? I don't know if we had one to win it. We were about an adjustment or two away. We'd been fighting a real loose race car all day long, and I finally got it tightened up there at the end, and, and uh, probably went a little too far, but, uh, you know, you're just chasing your, uh, chasing your tail here all day long. The sun comes out, goes away, so it really changes things. But there's a couple cars like the 8 that was on rails at the end, and uh, we would have needed to uh, have had at least one or two more adjustments to hang with them. But I'm uh, very happy for the Lowe's team. We definitely need this top five today to pick us back up in points. And I uh, just want to thank everybody at the shop for working so hard all winter long and all the guys on the team as well. All right, congratulations. That's the goal, get back to the top ten. Guys? Dale Earnhardt Jr. has taken a seat in victory lane. He is pretty worn out. Let's listen to him as he came to the, start fin to the finish line. It was awesome, Daryl, but he said his toughest competition was himself. What did he mean? Well, he just didn't want to beat himself. I, 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 I preach that all the time. Last week, they beat themselves. This week, they re rallied, recovered. He's back in where he's back in the points battle again, and uh, that, I think that's what he was talking about. And, Larry, he said the car was best at the end of the day. And that's when you have to be. I mean, especially at a racetrack that changes as much as this track did today. And once again, as we talked all during the race, very few opportunities to adjust that car but they made the right adjustments when it counted on that last pit stop. Junior rebounds from seventh to third in the next Dell Cup point standings. Matt Kenseth, another great finish. He's the leader. Tony Stewart second. Junior third. How about Casey Kane ahead of four-time champ Jeff Gordon? Already the three races, 204 out. All right, thanks, guys. And at 500 miles, grueling wear and tear as uh, Jeff and I continue from the victory lane section here at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. And behind us, uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and the crowd celebrating. Uh, let's talk about, again, the, the bounce back here. And I, and I think there was a critical point there of when to pit. And then we saw the pit crew of Dale Earnhardt Jr. rise to the occasion. Yeah, definitely so. I mean, that's what they really proved today. They have the intestinal fortitude to get up on the wheel, do the work necessary to get him back up where he can compete for a win. And when it came time for showtime, this team performed like they needed to. They got him off a of pit road, and it's really it's a tribute to if, trying to win a championship. This is the kind of guys you got to have on your side. No driver won more races uh, here in Atlanta than the late great Dale Earnhardt, the right. father of Dale Earnhardt Jr. This is Junior's first win in Atlanta and his first March win. But more importantly, Jeff, four races into the next till season, and we've had a split and victory. <laughs> You know, I just I just got this strike well, too. Now you know what Victor Lane really feels like. Way right. to go, guys. Way right to go. I owe part of it. I owe yeah. the Bud Light. Woo! It's uh, it's going to be a part of the Victor Woo! Lane celebration. And you know, you're 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 taught in television to just talk through these things. No well, matter we're trying what. here right now. But like you were going to say, two good. wins right now. Two for Kansas, two for Earnhardt, and it could be looking like a classic battle from years past when these two guys battled in the Bush Series. You know, and Earnhardt was able to come out on top there. But right now. Now it's really going to be interesting to see how these two guys well, kind of and, duke and it out. Remember the rivalry back in the Bush Series. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> see, that's why I missed the Hollywood Hotel. Remember back in the Bush Series.
Series. It was Dale Earnhardt Jr. getting the best of Matt Kenseth, right? He won the Rookie of the Year in the right. Series. He won the points championship. Then Matt Kenseth, when they get to the Cup Series, Matt edges out Earnhardt Jr. for the Rookie of the Year. Matt wins the points championship. It looks like these two are going to going to be at each other all season long. I think so. I think we got a classic matchup going on right now with these two heavyweights, basically, and it's going to be really exciting to watch. Thanks a lot, man. It was. All right, let's talk about next week as the Hollywood Hotel and our traveling celebration road show moves to Darlington for another full weekend of racing. Friday, the Bush Series qualifying, followed by Nextel Cup qualifying on speed. Saturday, the Bush Series racing presented by Yamaha, followed by Nextel practice on FX. And Sunday, start your day with NASCAR this morning at Fox Sports Net, followed by the Nextel Cup racing on Fox. Ricky Craven trying to defend his title against the world's best drivers. NASCAR, it's uh, where America gathers uh, every weekend to watch racing on uh, Fox. And our drive through championship fueled by Powerade, Kurt Busch, the team last week. Each week we donate money to the pit crew that does the best, and certainly Dale Earnhardt Jr. and his crew did their job to help him win today. Special congratulations to Fox Senior Vice President of Field Operations, Andrea Berry, on the birth of her son, Brandon Ellington Berry. Best to the family. Everybody doing well. Yeah, Coordinating producer of NASCAR on Fox, Richie Zions. Coordinating director, Artie Kepner. His birthday, happy birthday, by the way. Produced by Neil Goldberg. Pit producers, Pam Miller and David Platt. Thanks to Muscles and Bill Richards for their help on the pre-race show. For Jeff Hammond, I'm Chris Myers. For all of us from the Hollywood Hotel, thanks for watching NASCAR on Fox. Next week, you won't want to miss it. We'll be a darling. Lady in black, here we go.